SMTN. How's it going, everybody, and welcome to Shin Megami Tensei Network, Link 333. I am your host, Spencer Presley, and joining me from the depths of iPhone, gotcha, third-party Chinese rip-off mobile hell, uh, we've resurrected his corpse after 900 <laughs> hours of downloading the wrong uh, free-to-play gotcha game, uh, Devil May Cry Peak of Combat. We've got Crafty and back. Resurrected. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm doing okay. Uh, only spent ten minutes in peak of combat, realistically, but it felt like thousands. I of mean, hours. I think I've at least seen. I feel confident in saying this. I think when they were at, doing the nonstop horrible mobile ads for it, I think I probably saw at least two and a half hours worth of commercials for that game alone. Bloody hell. I, I somehow managed to avoid them all. It was only when I was making the video when I saw people mention them, and I was like, I had to track them down. <laughs> There's, they're like, uh, I, so, I, I, like, they're like the, it, it would almost, it's a thing like when you watch a really bad mobile game ad where you're like, oh, this must be on purpose, like, or this must be satirical. And then you go, no, 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 they just hired a bunch of people from, like, South Africa on Fiverr to make this ad for, like, 20 bucks. My absolute favorite one is the one where they get all of the uh, promotional images for DMC5, which is just yes! their faces, and they're using, like, deep oh fakes God. to get them to speak. And it's like, I'm Virgil, I'm Dante, I'm Lady, I'm Trish, gets the Virgil, and it's like, you know what I'm going to say. And it's like, oh, they're going to do the I am the storm that is approaching thing. And no, it switches to the one punch. Man He's gonna theme. say it. He's gonna say the hard R. That's what they, that's what Virgil was gonna say. It was bad timeline hard R Virgil. <laughs> Straight from Stella Blade. <laughs> oh my god. So uh yeah, it has been a hot minute. We were we were jo- we were joking about how long it had been since even like Soul Calibur two, but I mean this is how long it's really been. This is how we know like too much time has passed. I think every single Trails game that hadn't released in English is now finally fucking out. <laughs> Nearly. We've got a new one coming but in. But I mean, I'm, I'm talking like the old PSP ones that have been dusting away for like nine millennia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we've gotten the Crossbell arc finally, officially. Uh, and then we've gotten... Uh, oh god! Um, Into Reverie, which is Cold Steel. 5. Did you did you um, see the uh, new T-shirts they just put up? By the way, speaking of trails from Pinbox, I have not. Let me it's uh, they have two different ones for like the two different uh, of uh, trails of like series for it. They look very very nice. Ooh. Uh, I still remember when they when they did that big announcement where they were like, "Hey, we're doing four different games all at once, guys," and uh, the T-shirt that they were doing uh, that they did for that. Oh, the new T-shirts has already sold out. So hey, don't fun. you love when your good friend Spencer um, tells your news that uh, is completely unhelpful to you at all? <laughs> I'm helping your I'm helping your wallet craft. Remember- That's what I'm doing for you. It, it's true. Like I, I need a, pinbox stuff is can be expensive when you buy in bulk. Um, but no, I it's just the T-shirt that they released when they announced all of those games was like, hey, uh, by the way, we're gonna have the unmasked version of a masked character who hides their identity, like in one of the games that we've announced. So it was like big spoilers for the announcement. It's for the real fans. Listen, if you're buying merch for this as a fake fan, we're gonna call you out instantly. This is true. I mean, I already <laughs> knew the spoiler, but that's because I can't avoid it on Twitter. Uh, I will say the Pinbox website does remind me that we are 
months away, which is wild, from Ease 10, which I cannot wait to play, because I've heard nothing but good things from Japan. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I imported a copy. I was going to do a video on it, uh, like a little sort of like first impressions, and I just never got around to it. But uh, very fun. They um, they uh, switched up. They've switched it up a little bit from like East Eight and Nine. Uh, it's still kind of similar, but it's like oh, instead of like six characters, you've got two, but they're all a bit more got more going on. Uh, like you've got like the dual parry thing, and uh, it, it, it's it, it's got a really good like flow to it. I gotta say, a little worried. I was checking in on the SMT5 pen set from uh, Penbox. Only one of them have sold out in the like year plus since they came out last year. Bloody hell! I don't like. Do you think it's just because like? I, I can't imagine after, like, because I talked to the owner last year, and it was really weird of, like, realistically, they weren't, like, expecting, like, crazy numbers for this. But, like, I wonder, like, if you had told me what do you think is going to have a, be a faster mover, SMT5 or, like, a Nihon, like, the Nihon Falcom stuff, I, I would have at least figured, like, the, the SMT stuff. Because, like, the only one that sold out, I should say, unsurprisingly, is Jack Frost. But, like... All the big ones are left, Nahabino, uh, Amanazako, Pixie, and even Mothman. Like, the meme one is still in stock. Yeah, oh, I didn't realize that a Mothman one. I'll, uh, I'll have to sniff that up. I think probably the answer is we have stuff like the Atlas Shop and other people selling Atlas merch. Um, you ain't getting East merch from anywhere other than... <laughs> Like either pinbox. I, I was gonna say, the yeah, Nisa the the, 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 the Nisa store has done some stuff in the meantime, but I mean, I would say definitely, especially like if you look at the different type of merch, even pinbox does of like they do art prints, hoodies, t-shirts, like way, way, way more than just the normal, uh, the normal stuff. Yeah, because uh. I think the only thing that the Nisa stores really got is uh, they do do like those uh, unique looking plushies. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot about those. That they've, that they've done for like the main characters of a bunch of the games. But So, I can't believe I haven't even PM'd you about this. We should have had like a, an emergency podcast when this news came up. And then everyone else who doesn't care about Falcom, first off, shame on you. Second off, uh, I will we'll go to SMT News soon, I promise. <laughs> Uh, I want you to know the amount of noises that released from my body when I saw that somewhere, somehow, Tokyo Xanadu is getting another re-release. I, like, lost my mind. <laughs> so when I saw that, I was like, I don't know who who lost a bet or what happened, but I was like, I was so certain they were never going to port that game to anything else after it completely just fell off the face of the earth. Because, like, people people were calling me delusional, but, like, Tokyo Xanadu does end with, we'll see you next time. And then about, I think it was like a year and a half ago, they released, like, a anniversary calendar or something mm-hmm. that you could get. Very, like, nothing, well, well, you usually would be nothing, but on the last page of the calendar was two silhouettes for characters who weren't from Tokyo Xanadu. And everybody was like, oh, though, that's clearly just like, I don't know, a costume or something for a promotional event. Or, I'm like, no, these are new characters. They're doing something. They're cooking. I think, like, for people out there who don't know, like... Tokyo Xanadu is basically on the level of the world ends with you in terms of commercial failure and extremely niche. Yeah, it's... I mean, I think the one thing Tokyo Xanadu has going for it that the world ends with you doesn't is at least Falcom isn't actively trying to kill Tokyo Xanadu like Square seems to be with Tui. Because... My god, the, the whole, like, oh, we're going to shadow drop it on Steam the day Persona 5 Royal comes out on Steam? Like, what are they doing? I will say, I think, like, I think for something like that, I wouldn't call that a shadow drop, just because, like, it's kind of like the Kingdom Hearts thing, where, like, 
just because it was on the Epic Game Store for many, many, many months. By the way, why Kingdom Hearts is still an Epic Game Store exclusive, I have no idea. That one boggles my fucking mind. But, like, for Neo The World Ends With You, I will say that one was a bit of a weird one. But, I mean, like, let's be honest. It didn't sell great on Switch. It didn't sell great on PS4. There was very few reasons it was going to sell great on PC. I will say this. I know I'm, like, two years late to the party because, like, I didn't love the demo. I didn't hate the demo. I will say now, with the crossover event news, I have officially decided the next time I see... Neo the world ends with you because like I very often like I'll find it for like 15 20 bucks in like our Walmart clearance bins here. I'm just gonna pick it up because I'm like I got I just gotta buy this thing like even if I don't play it anytime soon I'm like I gotta just like give this thing like some love because this thing's like never gonna get ported is it I kept because like one of the big reasons I was like oh I'll wait for it was like it was a PS4 game in a PS in a post PS5 world and I was like oh they're gonna do a port eventually and then when I saw how bad it sold I'm like oh they're never gonna port this thing are they. <laughs> No, I don't think it even has a pro pack. No, like, no, yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a Switch game made to look like a Switch game, even on a PS4. Yeah, oh. I mean the PS, the, 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 I'd, I'd have the PC version, and it's not an exciting port, but it can go up to high frame rates and resolutions. It, it does all of the basic stuff. I'm just saying, if we're in a so, world where every PSP and Vita Ease game can get ported to PS5, I feel like no ga- other games shouldn't have an excuse. Yeah. Because, uh, what, we've got uh, Ease 3, or like the remake of it, that came out in like 2005 for mm-hmm. PCs. Um, and then we've got, I think, Cell Set... So, uh, Memories of Cell Set is getting, like, its third PC port. Which is basically like a just week. a modern port of the PSP, of the PS Vita remake. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's, um, out, so there was the original Chinese PC port that ran... Oh my god, I forgot for about no that. Uh, then there was our one that's really good, uh, outside of, like, some lighting stuff. And then we've got the PS4 remaster that has slightly better textures, which is now getting its own Chinese port again. So, <laughs> it's it's very bizarre how Falcom runs their stuff sometimes. I, as but... a console outsider, I always find it fascinating, even though I never have any morbid curiosity to be like, oh man, I can't wait to see how this, how this is going to run and find out for myself. But like, I always appreciate no matter how long it takes the weird or the like strange world of them porting everything with it. I will say, by the way, I did just search through your YouTube channel. I'm going to have to put some of the Tokyo Xanadu blame on you. I've, I've noticed there's not a single Tokyo Xanadu video on your YouTube channel. That might, that might have to do with it. So that might actually be because I'm oh my god, it's a magnum. nine hour magnum opus for Tokyo Xanadu, <laughs> and it'll be coming out on the Switch release date. You mad lad? Well, you see, the topic is essentially me going. Tokyo Xanadu is Modern Falcom's worst title, and it's still oh yeah, because it's absolutely like, like calling calling it, something the, the best of like the worst of the best is still pretty damn good. Like I'd rather play, I would play Tokyo Xanadu three times over before playing half of like even Fudiu's like most best tier games. Oh god, and I'm a, and I'm a <laughs> Fudiu defender. Like I like Fudiu stuff. Yeah, yeah, but no, it's I I I think Tokyo Xanadu's biggest problem is you look at it, you go, oh, that that I'm getting some serious Persona Five vibes right now, and then people who do play it get about five to ten hours in, and it drip feeds so many mechanics, and it makes all of its characters seem really tropey for like the first half of the game, until they start actually doing some really cool stuff. And it's like, oh, wow, they've done everything possible to make me think this game sucks until you get to, like, that second half. And it... it, I don't know. It's such such a bizarre release. It it really is, but, I mean, like, that was, like, one of my favorite eras 
for the longest time of just like weird PS Vita exclusives that then slowly kind of drip fed their way to like the release like in the West really, really late and like other things like that. Cause like ironically, one of the funny things, like even though I've like played a lot of Tokyo Xanadu, ironically, I've actually never played the EX version, which I'm sure I, Ooh. I know. Right. So like, I, I've always been like morbidly curious about it. Like, I don't know if I'd pick it up on switch <laughs> But at the very least, like I feel like there's a possibility that I might be able to play it running in 4K60 in a like world where this maybe sells 16 copies on Switch. Because like I will say, even if, if someone's even morbidly curious, the Switch release I'm almost tempted to pick up just for the pre-order bonus. Like, do you guys have the same pre-order bonus over there that we do here in the West? Uh, I have not looked. What is the so? If you get the bonus? day one edition of Tokyo Xanadu, it's it's either the day one edition or it's the Axis Store exclusive. You get the three disc full soundtrack for free. Oh, that is nice. Um, oh, we are getting a physical release. That's nice because uh, Europe didn't get one for the uh, original or EX version before. Uh, I have an American copy sitting around. Yeah, but, the um, little plushy guy. Oh, apologies. Is... I'm half wrong, half right. The game is 50 bucks in the West for the Switch, which is honestly pretty fair because it does come with all the DLC and stuff. The soundtrack edition is a four-disc full soundtrack like with an actual like soundtrack box. Like It's a full release with the soundtrack, but it is 70 bucks. I would still say for 20 bucks, that's not a bad soundtrack. No, no, that's not bad at but, all. But yeah, that is only on the, it looks like the Axis Games website. So I'm not sure if, like, because I think, like, Numskull is publishing it over there for you guys. I may be wrong. Right, okay. I'm trying to look now. The thing is, I'm not sure if they're going to... So one of the big appeals of the Switch version, at least over here, is... I don't know if you encountered it, but... The Vita version of Tokyo Zadu is the English translation for it is kind of oh, it's, it's it's absolutely uh, wild. It's it's like <laughs> I I'm gonna like oh yeah it's it's fucking weird. It's a fucking weird 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 localization. It's like th- th- there's NPCs that are not just straight up not translated or instead just have random symbols because. I don't know, some da- like data got corrupted or stuff. There's things that don't make sense. There's syntax errors. There's all this stuff everywhere. Um, the PS4 version and the PC version have had a second pass to the translation, but it's still not great. Um, people make fun of uh, Reen in Cold Steel for starting every sentence with ha <laughs> <laughs> and I believe people have recorded it with... Uh, th- th- there's the classic meme of, ha that's Irene. And people have pointed out he says it like 7,000 times. And like a thousand of them are just him saying, ha with nothing else added to that's all he needs. That's all you need for the character. Uh, with... Oh, yeah. There's it, 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 like, Reen, you can't hide your depression by putting ha at the end of every, every <laughs> sentence. It's like, yes, I can, ha But um, Tokyo Xanadu, because... It turns out that's quite just a writing trope of Falcom that like that's how they write a lot of their scripts. They put that sort of annotation into stuff. Uh, so in Tokyo Xanadu, when a character goes ha ha, it's instead replaced with asterisk chortle asterisk, and it comes up like every hour where you'll like uh, you'll be sitting in a cutscene and <laughs> people are chortling left, right, and center. Um, but what they're doing for the Switch release is... I don't know if it's just the Switch version or not. I'm definitely going to pick up one uh, and so I can you know, enjoy it. But they've gotten quite a few of the team who did the fan translations for the Crossbell Trails games. Um, I believe my friend Livy uh, or Anonymous Axolotl is the, the lead on the team. Uh... But yeah, they're, they're doing like a full retranslation from scratch with a bunch of people who, you know, care a lot more than the original one. Well, I, I think an important thing to remember about the first one was it was rushed out due to licensing kind of finishing up. Because I think that was like 
one of their last Falcom games they did before they stopped really publishing a lot of those. And that was, I think, the year... Yeah, it was the year before Vita production ended, and I know they had to really rush to get it out. Hmm. Yeah, there was a... Oh God, what year? 2017. Was it like 2016, 2017. Yeah, because that was the year where Exceed were doing Trails in the Sky the third, mm-hmm. I believe, and were doing a bunch of PC ports for like Cold Steel 1 and 2. Uh and then Nisa were doing East 8, and then Axis were doing Tokyo Xanadu, and it was like a battle royale for who's going to get to keep the Falcom rights after all of this. It's uh, it's it's like the teaser trailer for Alien vs. Predator. No matter who wins, we all lose. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's like Exceed, it's like you'll get really good translations, but they'll take two years. Uh, Nisa, you'll, you'll get <laughs> Really bad translations, but maybe they'll fix it after the fact. You just better you, you just uh, better not want to play it on PS4. That that's that's also the case. Oh right, yeah. Well, I mean that's more that's Falcom's fault. Like apparently, um, for those ports, they were like begging Falcom to let them implement all of. They the were like, "Fuck no, we don't want to like, touch this code. Page. If we touch it with like a ten foot pole, it's probably going to implode." Yeah, Falcom Spaghetti Code is something else. I remember reading the PC port dev diaries for Cold Steel 1. It was like, okay, so this is what happened when we fixed uh, this model problem. And then, like, Reen's head was, like, floating <laughs> with his body, like, upside down. coming up. It's like, so, yeah, um, unfortunately, the engine doesn't like PC, especially <clears throat> with how it's coded. So we, uh, we, we had to do some things. Oh, my God. So... You know what else has Tokyo, but not Xanadu? Shin Megami Tensei Five. Uh, <laughs> what a segue! Whoa! <laughs> so yes, everybody. Yes, everybody. Oh, yeah, I hope you. I hope you enjoyed the uh, our our preview of the first uh, twenty minutes of the uh, Falcom podcast uh, coming coming twenty thirty three. Uh, I think every time I've been on here, I, I have caused tangents to go. Well, you know what? I was like, I so I, I a, joke like, about this. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. There's got to be a Falcom podcast, right? Like, there's got to be someone out there who's doing like a Falcom related podcast. Uh, there was. Oh, right. allegedly, there was a... allegedly, two years ago, someone had a show called Trails of the Pod. It, take your bet. Is it still going? Oh, it is. Uh, it's still oh, good. They just had the, they just had episode seventy nine, uh, May third of this year. So kudos to them, and they're and they've already worked their way up to trails into the azure. Good for them. Nice. good for them. Yeah. Proving us wrong. Because uh, I I know the Giant Sword podcast when that was going uh, for a while with uh, Taylor from the Gaming Shelf and uh, Nick, who was like one of his friends from high school. Uh, they were a spiritual Falcon podcast a lot of the time. Uh, and my friend Kat had one called Aben Time, which is named after a radio station in Trails. Uh, but that was more just her general podcast. Um, but yeah, I didn't know about this Trails. I will before. say, Giant oh, Sword Podcast, it. great name for a show. Incredibly sad that it's been dead for many years. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think th- th- I'm still in the Discord. I kind of lurk there. They're, they're still active, uh, and I think they were planning on like January again, 2023. Was like... There was a continue question mark post, so never say never. <laughs> never say never. I think I think the longest hiatus this show went on, which is hilarious because in retrospect, it felt a lot longer to me. I, I guess especially it's like going from weekly and even like monthly at our slowest. I think the longest delay I ever had was the release of Deep Strange Journey in 2018 to Catherine Full Body in September 2019. So oh, like yeah. that's all like I so think... like that was like a long time but also at the same point was like really we only missed Persona Q2. <laughs> Sorry Persona Q2. And at the end of the day <laughs> we, yeah, I mean... Oh my god, I can't I can't believe oh, Triangle Strategies the game that killed the Giant Sword podcast. 
Thanks, Triangle Strategy. Oh, no. <laughs> no, Nick Taylor. You'll, by back. the way, you'll get a kick out of this very lightly related uh, Live Alive. I found on sale new, brand new physical copies here in the West. This is bonkers to me. Because remember, it was published by Nintendo. $15 brand new for a copy. Woo! I was like, that was so good that like I posted about it on Twitter, and I wasn't even like joking. I was like, who needs a copy? I need to like, I already have one. I was like, I need to like spread the good word of this game because like I feel like weirdly out of all of the HD 2D remakes, I feel like Live Alive just kind of came and went, even though it's on like the most platforms. Yeah, yeah. it's it's. I don't know what it, I think. Like it, it, I don't know. it had it had a lot of promotion. Like Nintendo bumped it up. Um, there was a demo. People were hyped about it, and like it even came out on PS4 and PS5 and PC like pretty shortly after release. So like, it makes me wonder like, did it just come out that fast because it didn't hit sales, or is it just like what were they expecting? Because like you look at even like Triangle Strategy, like Triangle Strategy sold better than that game, and like I love Triangle Strategy, but like I don't know how that's yeah. the case. My only thought is, like, oh no, because I was going to say, that my only thought would be, like, because it's an older game, like, the character designs aren't as front and center, and, like, people doing fan art and stuff on Twitter goes a long way that's, to promote That's the game. true, especially, like, you even look at something that, like, didn't sell as well, but definitely sold more, like, even something like an Octopath Traveler 2, like, that has a lot of fans who are, like, in love with that cast. I will say this. Live Alive, at least in America, definitely sold better than Bravely Default 2. Fucking nobody played that game. I've, like, never... I've I mean, never heard anyone be like, oh my god, you know what's, like, a must-play on the Switch? Bravely Default 2. So, I, I have a bone to fit with Bravely Okay, Default I was worried, I was worried you were going to be a Bravely Defaulter. I was over here. I was like, oh god. Oh, no, I have a Bravely Well, no, 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 I mean in the sense of, like, Defending of the... 2. <laughs> I, I am a fan of the second Bravely Default game uh, that is not called Bravely Default. <laughs> God, 2. they fucked up those names. I adore Bravely Second, and I am baffled why the producer went in an interview and went, "Yes, we're really sorry for Bravely Second. It won't happen again." And I'm sitting here going, "What are you did he, apologizing did he forget, for? Did he forget what that End Layer is the best of those three games? Like, what did he th- what did he think that second game was?" <laughs> Oh god, I don't know. But I So my my current video that I'm working on and that editing is a bravely second specifically talking about the demo and how sick it is. Uh but and just going back through bravely set in second like the, through the beginning again. Um I'm like, man, this game's so lit. I looked up bravely default 2 footage and I'm like, what the fuck were they, were they doing here? I will I will I say I appreciate what that team does. I appreciate what like the Bravely series has tried to be even though I don't think it's always succeeded. We're supposed to get a new one this year or at least a new one supposed to get announced. I don't know why, but like I'm at least optimistic. Like I I'm willing to see it at least. I mean We've had like what five phone and browser games from Bravely Default. I, 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 my pessimistic view is. I know, I know you're. A, I know you're a diehard various day lifer over here. <laughs> it's sitting in my wish list, <laughs> but that mostly neg- that mostly negative is for me from buying it, even when oh it's on my sale. God. So tangent i like how we found a way to make a tangent on the tangent to get us back off topic but yeah. yes everybody surprise surprise to somebody out there this is the number one smt atlas and persona related podcast we actually have news today uh atlas decided to whip out their marketing wang uh please don't think about that too hard and dropped a Ooh. steamy 18 minute long trailer no 13 minute long trailer and uh, I will say, I was excited about this all week. All we basically knew was it was comparison video uh, showing off some of the differences, some of the new things in Vengeance. 
I was excited because I'm a I'm a vengeance lover, as you know. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. I was thinking, like, okay, they announced they're doing this in English. Uh, initially, I was actually a little worried, Crafty, because like when I heard the trailer and I saw it was literally just a translated version of the Japanese one, I was like, ooh. Because, like, they've been pretty good at, like, making the translated stuff come up with it in terms of, like, English voice acting, English HUD. Like, it's just straight up, like, actually, a good example is the Metaphor video. Did you watch that one from last month? Uh, I watched bits of it uh, across various things on Twitter. Um, that's one that I've, I've for Metaphor, I've kind of decided I want to go with blind into it as possible so I, I, i'm peeking but I, i'm not i'm like trying to avoid actually I, I will say trailers. for metaphor especially being like a 30 minute long video it doesn't actually dive as deep as you would think in terms of spoiling anything but i also definitely understand like especially now that we know what's coming out in five months like i'm, I'm not i'm not gonna push anyone to watch it uh that mm. being said though i mean it it's got the elf with the pretty big pointy ears, uh, and like that's all you need to get me on. Board. She's like, "What?" They were like, "What should we make bigger, the forehead or the ears?" And they just said, "Yes." I I, I love that like old eighties anime style. That's elf. true. I will say I I, like, I don't uh, I don't know if anyone movie. out there exists who prefers the like teaser trailer art style that looked a little bit more just like traditional SMT fantasy style for it, but, like, I appreciate that they're definitely stepping out of their comfort zone with the characters and changed people up. Yeah, yeah, it, it's... I, I think they're... I don't think necessarily the 3D art always hits with the art style that they want to go for. Uh, like, the monster designs do, but, but, like, the character models are a little weak, but... I really respect them for going for something very bold and drastically. Different. I mean, and also, like, what I, I'm i pretty sure this is the team's first time doing anything mecha related. So, like, it's very, it'll be extra interesting, too, like, kind of seeing. We've seen the ships a little bit, but, like, I'm sure that there are more kind of crazy mechs out there for us. So I'll be, I'll be really interested to kind of see, like, how deep does, like, the mecha design really go in terms of, like, uh,. Humanoid, synthy, weird mixture, like fantasy element with it. So, meta- metaphor hype is still definitely, definitely there. But this video, similar to it, is just a straight rip of the Japanese one with English translated translations on top, but none of the gameplay is in English. So, mm. general thoughts after watching it, like craft, like what what was your first kind of like takeaway? Well, I guess actually to be fair, because especially because it, it's been so long since you've been on and we haven't really talked about it. Let's catch everybody up uh, who hasn't seen any of our reviews. Where are you at, or at least where were you at in 2024 of, like, someone comes up to you, hey, what did you think of SMT5? Like, where where was SMT5 at for you last, like, you kind of checked in with it? So when I first, like, played for it and I did my review, I was... For the most part, I was like, man, this is like really cool. Like they've done a lot of new stuff. They've got this big open explorable areas and uh, like the Makatsuhi meter is like a really fun mechanic. Uh, and, and like it, it's taken from like Tokyo Mirage sessions a bit with like the SD stuff. I was like, oh man, that's really like, I'm really liking SMT5. And the more I, time I have spent ruminating on it over the past year and a half or so, my opinion has kind of dropped for SMT5 quite a bit over time. Uh, particularly with like characters and story. Um, and also there's uh, there a lot of uh, gameplay stuff, like uh, the level scaling, which uh, we'll probably get to in a little bit, that the more I like sort of learned about it, the more it started to bug me. And uh, sadly, well... I ended up selling my copy of SMT5. I don't do that that much these days, but I, I got in a little bit sour on the entire thing overall. Man, so you are definitely going to be uh, much more on the opposite side for me for it, but I'm, I'm excited to then kind of compare when you then heard Vengeance was coming out and where you're kind of at now with it. 
Is it a remaster slash report you want to experience? Do you think there's things they can add that are going to make it worth not only going back to, but also ultimately making it recommended or like what, what's your kind of, what was your takeaway before this in terms of vengeance being announced? So vengeance being announced was for me, uh, as I was kind of like my initial reaction was kind of a mixture of, Oh, is this like a sequel? Is this, uh, like, uh, what you, uh, like an expanded version, like uh, Maniacs or whatever. And so I was basically for me, like after we learned that it was like technically a like updated version, but the fact that it's got like an entirely new route uh, has made me a lot more interested in it. Because uh, if, if it was just the final thing, I'd be like, oh, I'd get it on sale one day. But um, with like the whole uh, canon of vengeance or whatever the name is for it. Uh, I am excited for it because if it was just an updated version, we'd, I I feel like they wouldn't be able to do much with what they're doing. Um, And they are like, from what we've seen, they do are improving that base version of of the game uh, or like the original route. So I am excited for that. I don't know if I'll actually play for it myself again, uh, but I'm definitely going to give that second route a look. It's it, it's really a good point, especially because like this trailer, I think one of the biggest piece of news it really showed off was them confirming to me and everyone else, because one of my biggest things for the longest time is they've really just been leaning in and showing footage of the canon of Vengeance versus the canon of Creation, with the Creation basically being pitched as, oh, it's still the same game. With all the quality of life features they were announcing and adding, I was like, I cannot imagine they're not going to bring any of this over to the original, because it's like, at that point, it's going to feel so black and white, it'd be like, why would you ever go back to it if you've played the original with there's all these little things on there from like the fast travel points to the guest characters and the like additional demons and whatnot like that. So the fact that they announced it, I'm really excited. I think they still have a lot of explaining to do in terms of, okay, what's not in Canon of creation versus uh, vengeance. And I think that'll help and go a really far away with it. But I mean, the fact that we now at least have confirmation that they do share like similarities outside of just story moments, demons and other things like that goes a really, really long way. Uh, when you finish the trailer, I guess like, so now like a, a, a kind of current, like check with it. Um, would you say you're sold more kind of paying attention? I, I, it, it's always weird asking people like, okay, yeah, we're interested. But like, my thing is like, all right, there's interested and there's, I'm going to pick this up day one interested. Like, do you think like you're completely sold or still need to see a little bit more? I am currently in the, I am going to try very hard to get a code. Um, and then if I can't get one, we may I may put it off for a little bit because uh, there is like I am I'm very interested, but I, there's just a lot coming out right now, and you know, we, we, like while it is an entirely different route, it is technically like built in the same game of the one that I've already played. So it's like, oh, I do want to give it a sh- shot, but I don't know how much is it. Uh, it's sixty, so it's still just completely regular full price over here. Yeah, yeah. If it was a bit cheaper, then I'd probably do some. I mean, irresponsible. Especially spending. though, like nowadays with how fast games go on sale. I mean, at least in America, like literally every Sega game in the last six months has done this. In a month after release, it's always at least twenty to twenty-five dollars off MSRP. Yakuza was that way. Persona Three Reload and Tactica was that way. Unicorn Overlord we've seen as cheap as a uh, thirty bucks brand new, so they're really quick to get discounted over here with it. So like, I can't really blame anyone there. My big like thing with it is like my dumb collector brain is going to have to go 
and get all three copies at launch, but that's just because I want to guarantee... <laughs> that's only because they're doing the Steelbook, and I can definitely see this not being as overprinted as, like, SMT5. Like, SMT5, you had to go out of your way to not find that Steelbook, especially after launch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I... I, I assume but, uh, for you, you'd probably want to pick this up on PC, though, right? So I'll probably do what I usually do with these things, where I'll get it on PS5, and then in like a year and a half later, I'll go, I'll get that PC version. Future-proof it for when I want to go back, and then I'll never play it. <laughs> but at least, at least you're a realist with it. Like, my thing is... They've only shown off the Switch footage very, very, very shortly, and I've been demoing it only on PS5, and all the trailers are on PS5. Everything outside of that reveal footage has been PS5, and I've been like, my big kind of shock with it has been like, damn, this game does not feel like a Switch game when I'm looking at it. Like, I'm not looking at this footage and being like, man, no. remember remember this at 30 FPS on your 720p like Switch? Like, this looks like... This ju- like if this had never released on Switch and just came out on PS5, Xbox, Nintendo, and PC, like I don't I don't think it would have like stood out with it. And I think a lot of that is obviously on the engine they built it on, but I mean like compare it to even mm-hmm. something like I think stylistically, uh, and even like pound for pound, like I would say it's up there with something like a Reload, and especially looks way 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 better than something like a Soul Hackers. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's probably uh, half due to, I don't know if you remember, but on Switch, some of those areas with the dynamic resolution, they go, like, down to free. Oh, yeah, my favorite was to, my favorite was to, like, find a demon in the far background and see how few pixels and frames it would be animating at. I, I, I remember very specifically, for whatever reason, it's like, oh, the fairy forest. Oh the my god, that, the, like, di- the dithering possible. on that too, like with the light coming through the trees, was like, you... <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> we got, we got low res, we got dithering, we've got textures that I feel never load in, and so it looks like the entire area is melting. We've got, got really short pop in on trees and demons. It's like, and then we've got. Uh, Temporal anti-aliasing, making everything look murky as fuck. It's just, like that area was just so abysmal. Listen, i i like to I like to be the uh, pessimist when it comes to uh, <laughs> when it comes to uh, vengeance. I like to imagine with all the graphical features they're putting into the, like the modern port version of this, it would be so funny if somehow vengeance runs worse <laughs> than five just because of all the extra shit they chucked into it. What, on Switch? Oh, God, no, no, they can't Never say Switch. never. Never say never. Oh, oh no, I'm just thinking, you know, the grind rail things or the fast travel? Like, that's gotta, like, freeze. Like, if you run to one really quickly and jump on it and go for an area. That's a good point. It's like, well, we, we can't load these areas in quick enough. So. There's a, I mean, yeah, there, I, I, I've got some opinion on those damn grind rails, man. Um... But yeah, I, I guess we. What you don't like oh, Sonic I Adventure love, too? I've already got my soap sneakers on as we're as we're doing the show. <laughs> oh damn! Okay, <laughs> so trailer comes out. I guess really it's more of like a video feature. It, it's it's very lengthy. My biggest comparison when I saw this though, especially at the end, because basically the last. Uh, let's see here. The last eight minutes of this is 50 facts of just say, and it's really funny the way they say it is like 50 additional features and adjustments. Like this reminded me of, do you remember when smash for Wii U had that 100 like fact video or like it might have been ultimate, but I think it was for oh. I think it was for Wii U, where it basically just went through and announced like here's a hundred facts about Smash Brothers on Wii U, and it would just go through the most minute little things that either we might have known were new, had confirmed, showed off characters like yeah. that's what this reminded me of because there were little things like they have ones in here that are literally just 
this game's got button mapping. Holy fuck! That, like, okay, yeah, who, like, okay, but, okay, Grandpa, who cares? But then, like, other things, like, they haven't announced, like, oh, there's a 999 level boss rush mode. Just chucked in there. Have fun. So, like, do enjoy Bloody Palace. Oh, that, that is, that is true with it. Oh my god, could you imagine? No, I can't even. I can't. I can't even. I can't even say this. I was gonna be like, "Oh my god, could you imagine if like they had HD Nocturne Dante as like the level nine nine nine, uh, like demon?" You, the screen hasn't even loaded in yet. Oh you just hear sword, <laughs> trick, gun, royal guard. So. L flight response kicks in. Just oh god! I I've got a I've got a lot of things that I that I was excited for in this. I'm I'm not sure really kind of what stands out most uh, most of all with it. Uh, we're gonna go through all of them for the list of the additional features and stuff. But I, I figure, Craft, I'd ask you first and foremost: Were there any ones that like either surprised you, uh, made you happy, uh, you want to know more about? Like any any ones that stick out out of the fifty we learned. Yeah, I mean, the I was surprised by, like, I don't know if they'd mentioned it before, but, like, the stuff like the first couple of things, like the innate skills and the group skills, um, I'm very happy with, because, like, I- I'm assuming innate, like, the unique, like, passive things is, like, how Persona 5 Royal mm-hmm. does it. Like, uh, you know, you know, every demon having, like, a unique thing. Because uh, they, they also go into detail with it a bit later on. And is it in that list, or is it before? Uh, so they... Where they're like, oh, a, yeah, so... a bunch of them have, like, really good combos that, like, were, and it's like, they give you some examples, and I'm like, that that is some bravely default job system shit right there. Well, it, and it's like, funny, too, because, like, there, there were, like, the Magatsui, like, unique skills that every demon had, or most demons had in the base game, but, like, what's wild, next expect when demons are adding, like, over 270, now we're at the point where it's like, okay, not only then does every single demon have the innate skills which are unique to them, like, and, and, and then again, the trailer even goes in and shows that, hey, they're not all going to be unique and special to them themselves, like, you're gonna see repeats of, like, buff to fire damage, buff to, like, uh, group skills and mm. things like that, but, like, for the most part, they're gonna make sense of, like, where they come from in terms of their inherited skills, which are cool, and I can only imagine, like, there's gonna be a butt-ton of variety. The one that I'm shocked they keep showing off is the group skill attacks, because those we didn't really have any mm. of, and they just pretty much seem like, okay, uh, here's your oops all, like, demon cat like attack go for it and it's like so funny like they have so like they've shown so many of them in there and while they're not as like obviously like animation heavy as like the theurgy attacks from reload like there is way 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 more and i had even forgotten actually that oh god i always forget this like so when you're playing fez and original p3 what was the name of the like demon combination attacks like was there like a name for what they would call them uh fusion yes skills? no it was. was it was fusion skills and that's where theurgy moves came from for the main protagonist to mm-hmm. reload but like there's like six or seven and they like had to remove like over like 20 of them or something from the original base game which i mean again the way 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 more complex animations and like uh what they're doing and the buffs and everything for it but you look at the ones they have in vengeance like the the group skills look one for one like an hd version of fusion skills uh, uh not fusion skills but like for mm. for those attacks from like what you would see in Persona Three and Persona Four. Like, would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Um, and like you, you said, like some of them aren't quite as good as like the Fuji things, but like the one where it's like the four archangels, like um, oh, Michael, yes, Gabriel, yes, yes. Raphael, and like that one's sick. I- I'm assuming all like the end game demons have like really, really oh i know like i'm I, i'm like we've seen um, the one obviously for the kaditsu like demon ladies but then i was thinking of another one of like oh you know they're you know they're gonna do something cool with the demon council of like have like all four or five of the demon council like members do one. Oh, oh yeah yeah oh yeah 
that that would be great. Because um, yeah, I'm going for them now, and like yeah, the the the, the <laughs> the archangels showing up and being like, "We're gonna beat your ass." Um, divine retribution. That one looks great. There's the um, what? Uh, Cerberus, Orphus, Hydra, and um, Chimera, all just doing like a father son Kamehameha fire breath. I love. I love how. Oh, I there, love there, how there tiny. Some the Hydra looks, because they had to, like, scale them down to everyone else. It's like, is this, like, baby Hydra, like, after we killed the big one? Like, here's the little baby one you summon? It's like uh, End of Metroid 2, where, like, the baby one sees you and he goes, Mama? And you're like, oh, God, I'm a, I've got to take this I, one I in. I know what I was thinking of. So we know there's one for, like, I think it's Black Frost. No, it's uh, it's Jack Frost and King Frost. But, like, it would... It, it, it it would be a bunch of extra work that wouldn't be worth it, but man, if we lived in a world where we could just get, like, every crossover Jack Frost skin as, like, an ultimate attack would be so cool of, like, have the have the Nahobino one, have the Ringo one, have the one from uh, Strange Journey, <laughs> have the Devil uh, Summoner one, all the of Raiho. them. Raiho. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could... <sighs> Does that, I'm assuming it's like you've got to have them in your active party when you try and use them. <clears throat> so you like, you actually like... only need one of them. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because that was my problem with them in like Persona 3 FES. Because I think I used Cadenza, and I think I used Jack Rose one like once because it didn't it wasn't very good. And then I never got another fusion skill for the my entire playthrough. <laughs> Because I just never got the demon. Yeah, I feel like them. I feel like demons, like the demon fusion skills originally back on the PS2 stuff was like, okay, you're going to stumble across maybe a couple of these, but unless you're going out of your way, like it was never meant like the way Reload handles it of you, you selecting from a large list to summon. Because like Reload, like you don't even need anybody. Like you fuse, you fuse these two demons once and never put them in your party, and you can do it every time. Like, I think that's more fair, uh, especially than, like, having it the way it is in 5 makes a lot more sense for our vengeance of, like, okay, have one of them in your party, especially because you can still switch everybody out. That doesn't necessarily mean that you want or even would have to, like, like, why would you want to have Pixie and High Pixie at the same time unless you're, like, just doing a meme team? True. Yeah, 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 true. I mean, they could put in Uber Pixie, but Uber 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 Pixie what, what, like what meeting I... regular level two Pixie would be a hilarious like combination skill of just like they're the exact same <laughs> except one of them when they flick you just like cause a tactical nuke to drop on your location. One of them like makes a little bit of static come out of a hand, and the other one has just like lightning from the heavens. By the down. way, I forget the name of this person, but shout out to the person who recently joined our Facebook group. Somebody posted their Uber Pixie from SMT5 Vanilla, and it is literally just maxed everything incense. And I asked him to, and it was funny. It was like, "Hey, did you like use any of the like DLC incense things? Like, was stuff with it?" It was like, "No." All hand grinded, and I was like, "God damn, they're insane!" So, actually, you know what? Uh, speaking of pixie and like level grinding, so we knew the level cap was increased to one hundred and fifty. We still don't know what the prerequisite is for it. My guess would be, if it's not just beat the game, it's got to be something like do the super boss or do an additional something or whatever through it, because there's not really any optional dungeons in in the original playthrough, and you can use level 150 on both mm. playthroughs of uh, Vengeance or uh, Creation. So I'd be curious to see what it is. The big surprise that we didn't really know about was the new extreme difficulty level of once you unlock that... And you basically get new game plus uh, cock and ball torture mode, which sounds fucking delightful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it kind of reminds me of um, merciless mode for Persona Five Strikers. Oh, and true. How, like that. That is that. That is true. Because that that thing is like, oh, um, 
like what the pyro jacks that are like level two at the beginning of the game are now like level 70 and also it damage has been scaled even higher so you go down in like three hits in that mode uh but your reward is that like random battles can drop incense so and you, you, you can also get like uh new game plus equipment but so one of the one of the other weird ones that i feel like they kind of announced like as a sly, hey, this is in here, but we're not going to show it off yet, which I thought was kind of wild. I don't know if we've had this before, but correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, Fusion Accident Exclusive Demon. Oh, right, yeah. Um, so they didn't, so the demon they showed off is not a Fusion Accident Exclusive Demon. I assume not, because like he's in, they've shown him in the game, but like, to be fair, it could be that. It would just be kind of weak that, like, out of all the demons, that's it. My kind of, like, hope is that it's, like, some fucking weird chimera-looking, like, mismatched demon parts, like, glued together with it. Because it would be, it would be, it would be oh, very, God. very weird to, like, be like, okay, it can't, like, it, it, it's most likely going to be really strong and, like, really OP, but, like, it can't be, like, some super hot-looking creature. It's got to be just, like, some nightmare creature. It's got to be the final boss of DMC two. Like, <laughs> it's just a bunch of demon designs in a big blob, and they're all like sticking it, like trying to get their way out. But it's like you've got like a I don't know Mara sticking out one end, and then Jack Frost sticking out another, and then like the head of um, oh god, what's the golden Chinese dragon one? Lao. You know the one I mean, like the one that you got to fuse all four. Oh of the... yes, 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 yes. Name wise, no, I have no idea. But look wise, uh, yes, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um. But uh. Other, other one. But no, I think the only. The... Oh no oh, no sorry, no! You go. I, I I was just gonna say like with it of like I I like the idea of like having a fusion accident really really matter because I feel like outside of obligatory trophies. I feel like fusion accidents have never really mattered because, like, I feel like I can count on one hand the amount of times I've had a fusion accident, and I've been like, "Holy shit, I broke the game!" Yeah, I mean, so I, I've had one where I got like a demon who was like fifteen levels higher, and it's like, "Oh yeah, yeah that's pretty good." But um, the only other interesting accident I've ever had is a. Uh, there's a weird thing in Strikers, actually, again, which is, I, I assume it's, like, a unique thing, because it was very odd of, uh, after I'd beaten the game and I was, like, like doing, like, post-game stuff, uh, I got a fusion accident, accident that gave me a level 99 r Oh, my God. <laughs> what level were you? Which, like, you know, like 90-something. That's I still, think. what are the uh, odds? That like, is you know, so I wild. Like, I was, like, I was doing... But I don't. Fusion accents don't don't usually give you a random level. They give you the demon at the level that it's supposed to be. So I feel like that was a scripted thing that's in the game that you can get a level ninety nine R sense. Oh, big up! So speaking of like over level demons, one of the nice things they also are adding into Vengeance is you can now use demons from your compendium for like the fusion as like a stock summon. So instead of just being like, oh, you have to fuse this base like if you don't have let's just say slime pixie and pyrojack for a random fusion they're going to be coming out of your compendium at just whatever level you already had them at as the base summon you can have them be here's the fusion at the level they're registered if they're like super super high so that way you can get a bit of an extra buff so like that'll make it nicer of like okay i want to summon this demon but like especially like when filling out the compendium in five there were so many times of like okay i want to see these demons but like by the time i was getting to some of the lower level ones I missed, it was like, okay, I'm, like, never going to use you because, I, like, the amount of time it would take to make you viable is not worth it. Mm. I mean, that's, uh, that's what Soul Calibur, uh, not Soul Calibur, Soul Hackers 2, isn't it? Like, you going straight from the compendium. So, it, I swear that's I been remember it letting you do it from the compendium, but, like, I rem uh, I don't recall them saying it before of, like, 
let me get the verbiage they have on it here for the actual fusion because like it was the the way it was described was like oh okay I I don't I don't recall it like that exactly of let's see here I I know they, they, they one of the other things that they mentioned was you can uh when you're pulling something from a compendium you can pull out your registered version or you can pull out like just the base level yes. version yes so, yeah like, so I, you, I if you just I, if you just want to I've got the, the I've got the verbiage here for it so they added it's called dyad compendium fusion which lets you only fuse with ones that are in your registered compendium right away versus just the base stock demon. So I think I think that as its own, I'm right. not sure if it's already okay. been called that before, of like compendium summon only. But if it has, please throw rocks at me. I'm sure I forgot. <laughs> uh, I want to say Soul Hackers 2 has it, but that might just be me being trying to gas up Soul Hackers 2 at every opportunity. I do got to go can. back and get my uh, very very long, long overdue PS4 Platinum. One day I will double Platinum that game, but uh, <laughs> so so many other so many other things to do. No, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, like, I, I am... After doing Assassin's Creed 2... Oh, Platinum, fuck that I one, am... dude. I will never, I will never collect I... all those feathers. That... So th- this was the thing. It was uh, I looked at my thing. I only had three achievements left to get. One of them was getting all the feathers. One of them was wearing the cape that get- you get for getting all the feathers. So I was like, I could do this. Um, and yeah, never again. Ever since then, the only platinums I've ever done have been accidental. Well, like I've just been playing Gravity Rush, and I've gone, oh yeah, there was that little side quest. I'll go do that. Oh, that was the last thing I needed to do in the game. I feel like if I don't get the platinum and reload, I'm it, like the platinum for reload seems almost like royal level easy. Of like, I I feel like I'll be doing something wrong if I don't go for it. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I got I got royals as well. Uh, I think I needed two more. Uh, I needed to do fishing and I needed to go to the maid cafe like three times. So I just loaded up like a slightly old save after I beat the game. Yeah, the, like, the only like maybe feature at this point for me is I have to get everybody's social link maxed out. And I think I can. We're just in that like final month where like I've got a couple of stragglers and like every time I'm about to like finish somebody's like social link, it's like, oh, you could, but do you want to make coffee with Ken? And I go, God damn it, I do. <laughs> it's like every time I think of a way, it's like, pull me back. So, it's like I need to, so I need to talk to yes. a monk. <laughs> Please go back to your family, sir. I don't want to keep coming back to this bar. So w- one of the one of the other surprising oh. things was them finally confirming and announcing the exact names and locations for the new. Uh, spots you're going to in Vengeance. What's wild to me is that the two areas are literally the only new areas. So the new level in Dot is Shinjuku, which I thought was actually kind of cool that it's Shinjuku of like, it definitely feels similar to I'd say like kind of a mixture of that first stage and that fourth stage in Dot. Like the very kind of like post-Tokyo like buildings everywhere. But what I'll be curious that they haven't really shown too much with it is like mentioning how there's the giant park in the middle as well. So I think Shinjuku is a cool like addition for it that like kind of fits. A part of me kind of wishes it would have been, like, if it was the new, new area, like, it was, it would have kind of gotten out of that, like, Tokyo motif, but at the same time, I also get it, it's like, hey, we, we still just have to give you a really brown-ass desert, so, like, I, I get it. Listen, kid. What kind of flavor of desert do you want? You want the yellow one? You want the red one? I'd you like, want a, yeah, one? I'd you like, want the uh, I'd like Breaking Bad Mexico filter desert, please. That's that's what I would like. <laughs> uh, I will say the new dungeon. I'm continuously excited about to learn more, even though I don't think visually it looks very exciting. Like it's. I think supposed to be this like golden temple puzzle look, almost like kind of like a millennium puzzle vibe, but like the dungeon's name is Shakan. 
it looks really interesting. I'm excited for like the puzzle motif of it. My thing is, I think, especially in the engine and the way that the colors and like the color palette of SMT5 work, it definitely just kind of looks like more brown than like shimmering gold. But uh, again, there could be other sections that kind of change with it. Uh, what was your thoughts of uh, the new dungeon they kind of showed off? Uh, I mean, we didn't get too much of it. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Uh, unless they showed so they it showed on, it I for just... the first time in the second trailer when they showed us the new outfit change. So th- its yeah, motif yeah. is kind of like sliding puzzles mixed with the spirit oh. temple dungeon from... Well, actually, you know what? Even more so, it almost gives me like... I forget which one, but there it's the whatever Majora's Mass Temple involves you like rotating and like like going on different like parts of the gravity. That might have been the Spirit Temple dungeon, but one of those N sixty four like Zelda dungeons. Oh god, I think it's um not the Tower of Babel. Stone Tower in Majora's Mask? I forget that. I forget it. No, you but... you were correct. Stone uh, Stone what, Stone Tower one... Temple is exactly what I was thinking of. Hey, and I was like, I, my friend streamed it about a month ago, so I was like, oh. But uh, no, my one thing, uh, but my big complaint about uh, the dungeon, well, the few dungeons that were in um, five, and also there was that area in the sky in like the final area, is man, I really don't like how the dungeons are kind of just a lot bunch of cubes. No, I agree. Like, you, you, like it the- is. So it's very to, like... segmented of like and, and in a way like I get it like it's probably meant to be like a motif where it's like hey look at how blocky this is just like an original dungeon from SMT but also at the same time like it it, it is very much like that thing of I like when they kind of play with those expectations of like give me something a little bit like more kind of out there cuz yeah a, a lot of the dungeons are very Linear square cubed hallways. Yeah, I like to go into twenty two on the list, and it's like we've improved the map, and I'm like, yeah. Oh my god, I, I forgot but how bad I forgot cubed. how bad the map coloring was. Like the map, I thought was fine. Like they they have a lot of stuff they're adding to it with it, but like I had completely, completely like forgotten that. Like if you're looking at that map without any context of it, like, you have no idea what's the floor versus what's the second or third level of it. Like, it's little weird touches like that where it's like, wow, that really goes a long way. Didn't they... Wasn't the map patched in the original version in some way? Or was it just the dungeon was changed They patched... I remember they patched, like... I think either, like, the size or, like, the camera, like, could be more zoomed in or the map could be more zoomed in or out. I'll pull up the exact patch notes. No, no, no. I remember that. that. I swear there was a thing where people were like, oh, I played the real version of the dungeon, like, joking around because, like, they they changed something and it was... I've got I've got the patch here, so... Patch 1.02 did change the camera setting, the brightness setting. I cannot believe there was no brightness before. That is so fucking wild. No, no, no one, no wonder we're fucking like praising button mapping when when we had to do two patches to add brightness. I mean, in uh, one of the things that they listed was uh, you can now change contrast. So like, we're still adding basic visual features. I'm still looking for it. I've got some of the older patch notes here. Sugar, sugar, sugar. I'm trying to load it up, but the webs the Alice West website is Oh, 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 you were correct. You're correct. End. You're correct. So, patch patch 1.02 did make it easier because they actually showed on the map where the where the wind tunnel dungeon had the wind tunnels blowing cuz before it would cuz before it would it. just be like well fuck it i guess i'm just going to go fling myself into the wall and hope for the best <laughs> yeah i i knew i remembered something yeah so the map showed what. you where the gimmick 
wind tunnels were blowing, and it reduced the number of them, uh, as well as continuous jumps needed to get past the uh, Demon King's castle in the third section. So correct. If you played, if you played base game SMT five, you did have a worse dungeon. <laughs> You're. Well, no. If you play, you, you, like clearly uh, the path for the gamers, for, like the yeah, the gamers. gamers. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. It, like it, if you're a real gamer, you play the vanilla. That's like uh, real Soul Hacker Two fans play unpatched, so there's no run button. <laughs> oh, like exactly. Me. Like, yeah, listen. If I had to platinum this game without a run button, I'm not expecting you ninnies to uh, be playing it with it. We only in the, in uh, this ha- crafty in this house we only play Soul Hackers Two Patch to get the uh, '90s uh, pixie design and only for the '90s pixie design. <laughs> I forgot about that. All right, let's see here. Uh, another one I wanted to bring up that like I almost feel like a Mandela effect of like this was in the original game, right? But apparently wasn't the collecting the algami husk. I think is so cool, especially like I would hope that it adds to that kind of lore with that character of like, hey, uh, what does this robot sentient demon who's been remade and reborn a million times think? Because like, and, and we'll get and we'll get to this on another point I want to bring up. But like, algami is a great point of like, I think he's such an interesting character. That I always won, not wondered, but that I always wished had more input in the original story because, like, Algami basically just becomes the young man meme of like he doesn't have yeah. opinions, he doesn't guide your character. Like, there's very few scenes, and it's mostly relegated to cutscenes where it shows your character talking to Algami in a meaningful way and kind of being notified of like what they're doing from there. So it's like, I'm really, really excited to see hopefully more with the collectible algami husk, but also the sections where you get to go to the like park bench and like unfuse and talk to each other and also talk to each other, like in your bedroom. Cause like, Obviously, with your character being, and even the Nahabino being a silent protagonist, it's like, okay, that's cool, but, like, Aogami is their own character. They are their own person. There's no reason that they couldn't be more kind of communicative in the story. And, I mean, like, I'm not one of those people uh, who I actually don't really hold the, like, story or even lack thereof in 5 that much against it, but there are definitely those times like Miyazu or even, like, Aogami where I'm like, I wish you would just say more. I don't need you to do more, but it's, like, it's weird that you're here and you're not saying anything. Like, a good example would be, like, how big of a part Tao plays in the story until they join your party Mm. and then they just become, like, every other demon. And it's like, why did you stop talking when you became yeah. a demon? Because I lost all in personality. It's like, well, we've yes. lost another So, character. like, I, I hope with the inclusion of guest characters, the way they do that, like, I'm really interested to see, like, how that's handled. Because, like, with them not being, like, permanent party members anymore, I hope we get, like, a little bit more feedback. Or even just, like, conversations because of, like, those moments with it. Because, like, there are so many, uh, like, I, 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 like, looking back on the beginning of the Demon War in the third dungeon, like, remember, you're joining the battle with the angels, and you've got Dazai there, and he's, like, going into battle for the first time. It's, like, this big deal. And, like, you run into him, like, two or three times, and it's, and it's more of a thing of, like, why are we not just fighting together? Like, why is he not just rolling with me and we're, like, talking about what's going on versus, oh, hey, guy I haven't seen in 15 hours, what are you doing? Yeah, like, I think that's... Like, SMT4 goes a long way with just having... Like, even when the it's like, oh, it's just behold, my demons are a bit different. Like, that didn't need to be there but it was a really nice touch Mm -hmm. to help things and it feels really absent with like um 
Oh god, what's the glass as as Tudor? Like the glasses dude. Oh, uh Atsudo. Gives him an A. Atsudo, yeah. So like right at the beginning, he is like, Oh, I'm a devil summoner and he, he fights a thing. like you see him fight a thing, and it's like, Oh cool, we're gonna be rolling with him for a bit. He's like, I'll go off ahead. It's like it's, it's like, like oh, his wolf okay. dog. Like no, that dog screamed, "Hi, I'm cut content. I'm here because they made my model, but also there's no time to finish anything with my story. So I'm going to be here for two two cutscenes, and you'll never see me again." Imagine being on the box art, and dude. Just not. I got. I got. I got to pull anything. this up actually because I have my box art next to me of SMT5. I got to look at this right now because like this is the wildest thing. You look at the SMT5 box art, and it's like. None of you are related to the main story. It's like we've got Nabino, obviously. We've got uh, Ama- like Amazo, who is like m- maybe you could say a main character. Like that's not like maybe, maybe, maybe. Like she's the most. Oh, cool! You're that annoying fairy in the beginning of the dungeon. I'll deal with you four levels later in the end game. Like she's a completely optional side quest. You've got Wolf Dog Guy. Now, to be fair, pretty relegated in the background. I will say the inclusion of the angel as well as uh, Nua. Nua should be more important, but she gets a pass because she's Nua and she's really, really cool. The demon, the, the not the demon, the angel being on there is acceptable. I'll give you that. I love Konsu. Why the fuck is Konsu on the, on the front of the box? He is, like, literally, think about it. Him... And like Ama- like Amazadio, like they're both on the front box, and both of them are only if you do their side quest. Optional side quest characters are on the front of this game's box. It's like, hey, we've got the least important character on the count. Whoa, 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 whoa! Shiva could have easily been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I will say I will say this. By that logic, you might as well have just thrown Fion Mac Cumhill on the fucking box art. Yeah, Finn McCool. Mr. Bitey Mr. Fu- Mr. That, fucking Bitey Thumb McGee over here. Um just justice it. for uh, justice for uh Red Thumb guy. Will he be in vengeance anymore? He's like the only one I don't think we've seen like any extra cutscenes for cuz like at least with Kansu, like Kansu has new story stuff, so like there's a chance for redemption. You know, I'm just thinking. I- I'm pretty sure the demons they picked for the box art were literally picked because it was like, guys, we we need a bunch they of do the, all right design wise. The box art in SMT five fucks. <laughs> Lore wise, it makes no fucking sense. <laughs> it's like you could have gone with like the different. Alignments of like newer Angel Lady and well, I guess uh, Prime Minister dude doesn't have a design, like, does he? I'm almost, like, like it's he, uh, and I get it, but like I feel like there should be a box art for SMT five vanilla. Like, why was the box art just not Nahabino with like maybe in the background you could see Algami, but then like just include. Like, the human and their demon counterpart of, like, include Atsuda and then show Koshimizu. Show uh, his sister with Kansu. Show uh, show Dazai with the angels. Like, just do that. Like, you didn't have to do, you didn't have yeah. to do, like, go, like, like that vague with it. Because it's one of those things where it's like, there are so many more. Like, we might as well, like, have Go like, Goko, like, on the cover. And be like, oh, cool, hope this monk guy is really important. <laughs> oh god, what's the um? Is go wait? wait is that yes. the red dude? Yeah. Okay. I was just, like, I was trying to think. Of, I was going. To, I just completely forgot about him until just then. But yeah, have him on the box. He's a unique demon design. I thought he was going to be important because he looked kind of like Algami and Koji also uh, all my, all the real ones out there remembered Goko four years later so if you don't remember who that guy was do not feel bad <laughs> um, what are some other ones I wanted to bring up 
from our list here. Actually, I, I, I was thinking of how to put this on there, but we might as well give a bit of a heads up. Uh, there's a bunch of new, like straight up brand new demons I got announced and named today. Uh, shout out to Doi, who continues to just fucking destroy all the like new demon designs. So we now, for the first time, surprisingly, uh, have actual like African like demonology like representation which is really really cool. Uh we've got on on Yonko Pon who's like a little uh like almost like a tribesman looking like sun god mixed with like almost like a nesting doll face. Uh he's and just then the little guy. He's just a li- well the little guy is Nyami Nyami. Nyami Nyami is literally just looks like a little goofy bird mixed with like a drill bit. Uh, and then Z- yeah, I guess. And then Zaddy material number one uh, is Anansi, <laughs> who is just a man levitating with a fucking spider legs holding him up, and he just looks fucking sick. Yeah, th- th- that's definitely like the standout here. Uh, I think, like, I'm a bit hit and miss with Doi, but like all of his like humanoid demon designs, all like they're all great. I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't say all of them, like, some of them always are, like, hit me in a little weird of, like, some I like the new, newer forms with other ones, I'm, I'm, I'm a little more timid on, like, I don't love Odin, but I like Odin compared to all the other council members in terms of, like, he fits the council, but I don't love him on his own, he's, he gets the, like, episode three Anakin treatment, like, (laughs) <laughs> I, I I'll give I, I'm allowing him a seat at the council, but he does not get the rank <laughs> of master. Oh, I, I like Odin. I, I do I do miss like old Odin with his like goofy ass helmet and like loincloth. But like, oh my god, I like a <laughs> Super Sentai style Odin guy I, chilling out. Here. I will say this: having because I think. Persona 3 Reload might be one of the first who includes multiple demon designs with the same name. It is so fucking funny to me that Persona 5 Loki and regular Loki are like three levels apart from each other. Now, to be fair, you need DLC for relo- uh, for ro- for Royal Loki, but oh my god, like, look... <laughs> It's like, how how am I supposed to look at both of these two with a straight face and be like, yep, that's the same character? Yeah, that is... I mean, I, I like the idea of, like, um, like uh, Kanji has Takemina Zuchi, who is one that you can have in free, and they look completely different. And I like the idea that, like, people who aren't wild cards have their own interpretation of a design. But yeah. When, 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 you, when you get a catchy Loki as DLC that you can throw on someone, it's like, okay, now this starts getting a bit silly. Honestly, it, 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 they're like, it even leads to other things of like, I'm trying to, I'm going to look this up now to like, see if they've ever done it. Very weird. They never did Robin Hood before a catchy. It is. It's very odd. Uh, shout out though to like on that note, I do love like the comparison like between normal SMT, uh, what's it like normal SMT Susano versus like Persona Four Susano is like so well. I mean, even actually a great example is SMT Five Sukiyomi versus Show Me Nazuki Sukiyomi. Like, could not be any more different, but they look so fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good shit. By the way, I don't know if this is still the case. I'm going to look this up. Did you ever get the Persona 4 Arena Ultimax English manga? Uh, no, I haven't actually. I it was um I was meaning to get it because like I absolutely love Memento's Mission and like I like the Ultimax manga art thingy, and so I was like, I kind of want to get it all together. So uh, I'm going to see if this is still the case. Okay, they... Oh, I don't think they have it anymore, unless it's like two different listings on one page. Alright, they do not, unfortunately. So, for a minute, the Udon store was selling the Barnes & Noble exclusive covers on their website for international shipment, but I think they've sold out of all of them. 
Oh, damn. Uh, I, know, um, I think it was when Memento's mission came out. I was like, um, why is... The, like, uh, I think it was... I forget why I was buying it from, but we had the Barnes & Noble exclusive cover. Oh, really? On, like, one of our shops. Yeah, but it was only for the second book. Well, it's well, c- it's because it's because over- Makoto, Makoto was that was on the cover. That's why. Uh, yeah, probably. But uh, I, I remember being like, "Oh, this is a bit odd." And so I, I I sent a thing to I can't remember if it was Udon or like some somebody on Twitter, and they were like, "We'll look into this." And I got this very much <laughs> thing of like, "Oh shit!" I, 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 you just I, narked I, I, on them, dude. They're never they're never gonna get I a know, job ever again. <laughs> So be glad though, because I assume did you did you buy that copy? No, no, it's um like it was up for pre order and then it eventually disappeared. I think, um, and I think because it was, it was Makoto, I was like, yeah, give it a pass. Damn. Uh... So well, I, I like Makoto, but just like just to, to like more than... put this in perspective, this is so wild to me how rare these got, especially considering how many of these I did for giveaways. Mementos Mission Volume One right now. If you go on eBay and try and buy a copy, uh, fifty dollars and more. Sealed goes Ooh. for over a hundred. Jesus. The Makoto cover for Volume Two seventy five for a uh, brand new copy and up, and Volume Three sixty five seventy dollars a copy and up. Insane. Bloody hell. I will say, especially seeing how much the Futaba one goes for, literally, I, I probably bought almost five to ten copies of each of those exclusive for like giveaways, and I, I look back <laughs> on it, I look back on it now, and I'm like, why did I, why did I not just store these for free money? It's like it's an investment. It's true. I mean, it, I do... ironically, it does then have me like it does make me then look at like Ultimax and Arena and be like. Well, those are still in stock. But then I remember, remind myself, like, Spencer, Persona, oh, Persona Arena is not even one one-hundredth as popular as Persona 5. This will not be as rare, I guarantee it. Yeah, it's... Manga sales can be really weird. Um, I got, uh... I, I was getting the Kingdom Hearts ones, um, and f- I think it was, yeah, 358 over two days. Um, I could get volumes two through five really easily. They were perfectly available. Uh, volume one, uh, I could only find for like 70 quid. And so did a bit of digging, eventually found one that was like, oh yeah, here we are. Here's the mango thingy. Uh, they send it. Uh, I get a French one. And try again, get a German one. <laughs> and basically for about a year and a half, um, they just didn't print any of Volume 1s in English, and they became like this super rare collector's item that you couldn't get anywhere else. This is wild. Um, I'm, looking, have... I'm looking on eBay right now. This is insane. Like, $90 for, like, a single Has volume. Has up again? So that's for Volume, can, that's for volume 5. Volume 2, looks like Volume 2 and Volume 5 are the hardest ones to find right now. So... They did a reprint for Volume One, so I'm assuming they've yes. run out. Yes, Volume two Volume and One five. is now normal price, so you can buy it for ten to fifteen, brand new. So what we're saying is, is I could make a living by just buying tons of uh, free five eight over two day mangas while they're cheap, and then when they inevitably get expensive. Yeah, dude, Ma- manga <laughs> manga sales are wild. Like uh, when the Yu Yu Hakusho live action came out last year, I had an itch. I was like, damn, I, I always regretted not finishing uh, my English collection. I should go back and, like, look at it. And then, like, it's never the whole series is expensive. There's just that random one or two books in the middle that are like, oh, hey, you know volume t- you know volume 13? Yeah, that just got printed twice. Fuck you, I guess. Uh, that said... Uh, for me... That said, like... That's almost like kind of like the fun though of like manga collecting is so weird of like it's either dirt ass cheap or impossible to find. Yeah, it's um I've been uh I've got a few left, but I've been collecting uh the Nagima series. Oh, that was the first manga. 
Oh my Those god, dude! Mangrove. Some of the some I, of those are very expensive over here. Especially, I think like the last volume were like, isn't that like the one where they're like all like basically naked? Uh, the last volumes, them all like in like evening wear, and it's like the entire cast of like fifty characters wearing like fancy ballroom. Oh no, 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 no! Yeah, think... the, the one I'm thinking of, there's like a Negima cover where like they're all like not wearing swimsuits, but basically wearing swimsuits. Oh yeah, I wouldn't put it past them. I re- I remember there's a, uh, I think it's from UQ Holder, but there's a panel that is just uh, two of the girls wearing like towels around them. It's like curved edges, straight lines, concave, convex. Can't we just say that they're all wonderful? Yeah, <laughs> it's like this is this is a this is a philosophy that somebody's like uh, uh, fucking Ken whatever his name is has taken. But you know what? I respect it. But, who, uh, who, yeah. who published Negima, by the way, over there for you guys? Was it the same as so here in this, English? So this is the thing. Um, to get the entire series, um, I have three different publications of Negima <laughs> in my collection. Um, luckily, they all keep a relatively similar design. It's just the little label at the very t- top and bottom of the spine is different. So I'll, I've got like a little. Um, oh god, who is it? Hold on, let me. So in the West, I'm sure this has changed for reprints, but the most, um, the most, the first common two, ones like, here are Del first, like, Rey and volumes, Kodansha. I have like a little purple label with like a blue and white circle at the bottom mm-hmm. uh, that doesn't have a name of the publisher. Then it's Del Rey, uh, and it will switch back and forth between those for the first like fifteen. Uh, issues. Then it stays as Del Rey for until issue uh, until twenty seven, and then after that, it's, it's Katakawa. Also, so, I, apo- I I apologize. I was thinking of Negima for the naked cover. The naked cover I was thinking of for like the infamous naked uh, manga one was Love Hina Volume Ten. Love Hina Volume Ten is just yeah. straight up the one that's just them all naked. Same dude, it's fine. Is, oh, is that the one where it's the hot spring? Yes, cover? it's lit. Well, no, not hot yeah. spring. They're on like a tropical island beach, and like it's oh, side okay. boob for days, turtles on the bottom, but like literally, I think one, two, three, five of them have just no top on. On the cover. Lovely. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. <laughs> a, thank you, Ken, and B, thank you, Tokyo Pop, who looked at that and went, Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just put that out. You were good. No, no shrink crap scene. So, uh, so you know what the author's doing now, don't you? No, actually, I haven't followed. What what, what is uh what what is Ken doing now? Like, what's their current series? Uh, he, he is a politician. Oh my god, that's too funny. He, uh, so basically, he because Negima basically never got like a decent anime, and he got fucked around with it so much, and uh, like he could only release OVAs, and then due to like licensing reasons, he wasn't able to make any new animes and stuff. Um, he got sick and tired of it, and was like, "I want to change Japanese copyright law, uh, so it gives more freedom to like the actual artists and not to the companies." Like licensing, them. like literally, so, yeah, if you, if you been... go, if you go to his Wikipedia page, Ken Akamatsu, famous Japanese mangaka and politician since twenty twenty two. I had no idea. That is so funny. Uh, it's like I'm like that man. He's a hero. God, that is That's... absolutely wild. He is Toshida. I want to hang out with him. Get, uh, I want to get ramen after school and help him with his political rally rallies. Man, what a what a what a fucking social link that guy would be. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's, it's just, I'm just imagining him, him be like, hey, afterwards, you want to go hang out with Yusuke and we can make a manga all together. Oh my god. Um, last manga question before we we start to wrap it up. Uh, I was just what... about to say, hey, we, we, we're tangenting. Listen. Here. Listen, we can wrap it around. There's Atlas manga that exists out there. Everybody, please buy uh, Ultimax <laughs> Volume 1 through 3 and 4. Uh, what, what have you been collecting slash reading? I just got the latest volume for Chainsaw Man uh, and the two, like, for some reason they put them out back-to-back, but I'm not complaining. The uh, They did, like, two One Piece spinoff manga 
which are very, very good. Uh, one's by the guy who did Food Wars, and the other one is uh, bu- uh, the Ace side story, but the manga version done by Bochi. Oh, okay. That's uh, that's cool. Cause I, I, Ace is uh, so I'm not a big One Piece fan, but like Ace is one of the characters that I was like, yeah, that guy, that that he, he he's him. But um, as for me. Uh, I am on a bit of a normie arc right now. Normie arc, uh, as I, I just say, as I fucking say, like the two most popular animes in English right now. No, 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 no. no. Uh, um, so I've been getting really into Star Wars. Oh, you um, know what I want to pick up that just came out? Did you get the Visions manga this week? I've not got the Visions manga. Um, what I have got is a. Uh, so I've been getting into. Uh, Doctor Aphra, I got like the big omnibus. Oh, that's, like, nice! So I've got that, and then I've discovered uh, what have I got? I've got, uh, I've got, I've also been getting into like the High Republic stuff. That's like about, uh, I think, like a hundred, two hundred. I, I want one. to care about that. I, I hope when the Acolyte comes out, I start to give a fuck. Because man, there's just been nothing about the High Republic I can give two shits about. But I'm, I'm optimistic. So, uh, so I'm uh, 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 because I've got like at the end of my shifts I've got like an hour and a half of like mini guild cleanup to do. So I've been putting the audio books in while I've been doing those. Uh, so like I've been getting through them, and I I really I've only read like the first adult, the first teen, well young adult, and the first teen uh, books so far. And I, I might end up just dropping the young adult and teen ones, but like the actual adult one was really good. So, uh, and like, that's got it. I mean, like, you can get away with just reading that as the base thing. Uh, but, so that's a uh, Light of the Jedi. And I, I, I enjoyed that one quite a bit. But what I've also picked up is uh, there are a couple of weird, uh, there's three of them. There's a novel that's called Lost Stars. And it's uh, basically a romance thing between a, a rebel pilot and an imperial officer that like takes place over the original trilogy and for whatever reason there is a manga adaptation of the novel that was done as like a web comic uh and so i've gotten the free volumes for that huh who does the art uh it is i don't think it's anybody super noticeable it's uh yusaku uh komiyama who uh like i think it's like I don't know. I think they kind of landed this deal as like a little thing that they were going to do for like, because like you could you didn't the web comic you can just get for free, so like I don't think he was necessarily getting an awful lot for it. But oh, I see the uh, art though. I mean, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it's um because I got that one. Uh, there's also one for a book, uh, another novel that's only one volume for the manga called Guardians of the Wills, and it's about those two guys from Rogue One, like the blind dude and the, uh, like, monk who's... Donnie Yen's character? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that one's art is really ugly. Like, I I looked at it, I was like, ah, I'll get it for the novelty, but it's like, ugh. What are your, what are your thoughts on the art style they did. I, I, was, I feel like it's a little late for it, but like I want to check it out, because I like the artist. What are, you, what are your thoughts on the art style they chose for the Mandalorian adaptation manga? Oh, is that a manga? It just came out. Like They just are about to put up Volume 2. So it's straight up just an adaptation of the show. Uh, okay. Uh, let me... My internet's been a bit slow. I think it's because... Skype call. Uh, what I can see from like the small uh, previews on Google Images, it looks pretty good. Uh, it looks a damn sight better than the uh, Western comic adaptation. Oh yeah, that one I know. I noped out of that one pretty fast. It's a uh, well. The reason I know about, I, I wasn't gonna bother, but uh, um, I, I ended up doing a bit of research because the guy who does the Mandalorian adaptation and he also is working on uh the obi-wan like series adaptation uh did a chapter in um well like did an issue in dr afra that's in the uh like omnibus that i've got oh. and i was like oh god 
I was like, God, this art's hideous. And so I looked it up a bit. And uh, yeah, the guy straight up, if he, if they if he can get away with it, will take a screenshot from <laughs> a movie and will put like a filter over it and then trace over it. And there's like this video of somebody going through the Obi-Wan comic and lining up panels shot for shot with the like and because it's an adaptation he doesn't even need to play around with things it's not like oh i need to get this one shot of, of ha- uh, han solo and have him talking to somebody and that other person is like an original character so i i, I will have to draw them listen, it's like no the listen, only art, theory... art is hard art be hard <laughs> I'm like, how has this person got a job? He got paid for that, too. That's the worst part. It's like, uh, I'm never getting imposter syndrome again. <laughs> um, Let's see. I, I've got the list pulled up here. I'm going to just run us through 1 through 50 and stop me if any of them caught your eye that you wanted to talk about anymore uh, and or make fun of. So we've got inherited skills, group skill attacks, Magatsui demons... Uh, which, by the way, I completely like. That's one of those things. Like, there's, there are some things they adding to the vengeance that I'm like, how was that just not in the base game? It's so funny to me. I'm like, yeah, it's we just, just didn't. Slime, we right? just didn't have stronger shaded versions of demons. Okay. Um, let's see. The Magatsui Sonic Adventure Two uh, ride riding rails level cap unlocked to 150 the virtual trainer so basically we talked about it a little bit before it's basically just like the bloody palace description is pretty much perfect of you go to the i forget the exact name of the i think it's the diet building but you go to the place in uh the real world and you find a technician where you would normally go to dot and then he can let you just start doing boss rush mode up to 999 levels uh, guest characters, which, like, a, a one I do want to talk about because it goes into point number eight. Demi Fiend joining the party as a guest character is, yeah. a, li- is a little bit weird of, like, so you could have Demi Fiend in your party before, but it's interesting that, like, he, like, I'll be curious to kind of see, like, what the difference is between having him as a guest character versus not, because, like, I'm almost wondering, like, okay, hypothetically, no matter if you play Canon of Creation versus Canon of Vengeance, you should be able to do all the DLC in both playthroughs. So my wonder is, like, are they expanding, like, his move set? Are they going to, like, let him have, like, those moves, like, where, like, he'll be allowed to, like, summon demon attacks and have Uber Pixie? Like, I'm very curious what Demi Fiend being a guest means versus him just being a summonable character. Like, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I imagine... Well, no, because I was going to say, I imagine uh, you'd summon him and he'd help you fight the fiends uh, or something. Yeah, because like, that, uh, that would be an interesting like mechanic of, like, instead of you don't know Demi Fiend's going to be the final boss till you're there, like, it'd be cool if he kind of joined you as... here. We, there, there's a thing they have on it as one of the things that they added to it... Quest navigators, like it'd be cool if he's like your quest navigator during all the menorah fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, I was going to say that, but um, there's a screenshot on Twitter that uh, I saw, and I just found it again. Of um, he he's level ninety, so I doubt that is the case. Unless, unless they've just taken like a dev screenshot or something, but like you know, it still seems kind of weird. I almost like, feel what, I almost feel like that's like under leveled for like what the actual fight was because Jesus man that fighting him that first oh, time yeah. was yeah. insane. Oh wait no he, he's level ninety nine now Halbino is level ninety. Oh okay like that makes that makes way more sense. I was going to be like man it, oh, I, I know it's only nine levels but like only having him be level like <laughs> like only having him be level ninety is like I don't know man this dude hits like he's level nine hundred. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, the, the the key trick is to have him at level one, and him still hit like a truck, and it's like, he's not even trying. It's true. Just wait till he puts his uh, purple jacket on, then he just fucks everyone up even harder. <laughs> it's like, now my magic stat is slightly higher. Uh, let's see, number nine was Demon Haunts. 
Uh, Demon Haunts is their weird little, like, free zone hangout, which also ties it. I'm surprised they didn't count this as one of the ones they have. Uh, super weird that they added photo mode, because, like, I'm like, even in 2021, I'm like, I feel like every game had photo mode. So I like how it's there. The options for it seem re- like it's basically just free camera. Like, there's not even, like, yeah. oh, here's a filter, here's some demons that you can have, but, like, unless I'm wrong, I don't know if, like, has any Atlas game had a photo mode before? Uh... I know Persona definitely doesn't have it. I know Soul Hackers doesn't have I, it. I, yeah, I was about to think maybe Royale has it in the Thieves' Den, but no. Like that's more like a model viewer, and I don't think there's any. Photo yeah, modes it looks there. like it looks like Vengeance is the first uh, photo mode. Welcome to uh, welcome to 2017 video game trends atlas. Nice of you to join <laughs> us. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, consecutive encounters is really really cool. That's another one of like it's so weird that that was not in the base game, but that's just one of those fun but annoying fuck you SMT mechanics that I really, really appreciate. Like, you barely survive a fight, and they're like, hey, fuck you, here's three more. Did you see the, um, somebody posted on Twitter, they were playing SMT3 like about two weeks ago, uh, and they're in the Amala Labyrinth, and they got like 11 reinforcements in a row, <laughs> and like the tweet was just leave me alone. Nocturne, Nocturne, especially, man, has like so and like has some moments in it where it's just like somebody's doing this to fuck with me on purpose, but it's just a it's just uh it's just RNGs hating everybody. It's when I, it was me going through Nocturne, I beat Mathdoor on my first like real attempt, like I kind of ran in there, like like, for a test run, and was like, okay, I know what I need to do to prepare now. Um, and then after beating Matador, uh, there were, I got into an encounter with three lowers. Uh, one of them th- it was enemy advantage, so, you know, they got to a t- move attack first. Uh, one of them did a normal attack on me, created, and then all, all three of them used self-destruct. <laughs> but you can't hear it, it's listeners, like... but there's actually a, a, a PS2 disc snapping in half in the background, if you just can't hear it. <laughs> That's it was like, so oh fucked. yeah, sure, Matador. He was easy. Normal random battle. That's what will fuck you up. God, that's that's so funny. Um, let's see. Other ones we had the Dyad Compendium Fusion, like we talked about. Um, adjustment. Oh, here was an interesting one with it. I I've got to pull this one up with it. The adjustments to mercy. Which let's see the way that they had phrased it. Here we go. Uh. So demons will now beg for mercy and are more likely for this to actually happen during battle. It was very rare that you would actually get demons begging for mercy, and it would mostly always just be, fuck you, or they just throw money at you and then leave. So interesting of them kind of expanding upon the variations and the demon uh, negotiations. Uh, which, by the way, after like a hundred hours of Persona Three, I never thought I would say this, but man, it's I, I, I went from being like, "Wow, I really miss Shuffle Time," to being like, "Damn, I miss like recruiting demons the old-fashioned way." Yeah, I like both. They've both got their own little charm to them, and I, I really like that. That like just adding more variation to demon negotiation is fun because I love like walking up and Jack Frost out of nowhere being like. <laughs> Hey, you think you're hot shit? Crush this rock with your bare hands, bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. That is that is especially true cuz like I'll take shuffle bonus over like how Tactica does it. Like I love Tactica, but it has to have some of the most unsatisfying demon collecting mechanics ever. Oh, you beat a stage? Here you go. Oh, is there a, is there any <laughs> yeah. rhyme or reason to who I have? No. Here you go. Enjoy. That's um fun. Let's see here. We've got um, addition of resets. stat resets. Yeah, for the uh, for the protagonist for it. Uh, oh yes. Yeah, so uh, this was such a funny one as well. It'd be like so when you would use like the level increase instance or other things like that, you would have to go into a battle before it would actually like level you up properly. And like that's such a yeah. funny little thing to, for them to like change with it of like. 
thank you for doing that. Like, that will save so much time. But then, like, I also think about, like, then anyone who has, like, those DLC trophies where, like, you get, like, nine of those items every battle. Like, oh, man, speed running this game is just going to be insanely fast compared to what it used to be, I bet. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we talked about the Dyad Compendium, the fusion accidents getting expended, the new areas, the Algami Husk. Uh, this is a weird one that, like, tell me if this was more annoying to you in the meantime. So, originally in SMT5, if you didn't defeat an abscess, which was basically like a giant big red wall it would block off a section of the map ahead of you. Now the map is never blocked off. It just shows you the whole stage. Cool? Like, th- that's fine. I was just like, I was just thinking, like, I never remembered being annoyed by not being able to see the full map because it kind of just made sense of, like, okay, what can you explore? There you go. So, for the most part, I didn't have a problem with it because, like, it makes sense. Like, it's like, oh, go clear this thing out and then you can explore better. Like, it's the kind of reward for it. But I remember the specific, I think it's in the second area. Um, there's like three of them, and you're in like a really windy, like. Oh, uh, you're right, because yeah, like the, se- the second area is like where you basically get to choose, okay, you have to do this, this, and this, pick whatever order you want. And yeah, the map looked really wonky. And it's like, oh, here's a labyrinth of tunnels, and we're going to cover them up with, like, three different things. And I was just like, ugh. I forgot about um, that one. Yeah, that's a good point. I, c- I could, like, I could oh, see that. It, it, if you fall off the edge, you'll have to rewind your way back, because it, like, you, you go up on the walls of the thing and have to run around, so... You know what's funny? Uh, that was like the one instance. You know what's funny? I was just thinking about this. Out of all the things they've announced, they're changing with it, that looking back at, like, even something like Persona did and was really vocal about, none of the changes, at least according to them, they are not doing any design changes to the dungeons in SMT5. Yeah. Which, is, which is interesting, because, like, kind of going back to our complaint about it being, like, really, like, uh, linear and QB feeling, like, I feel like it would be easier to kind of rearrange those dungeons with the way that they're they're kind of laid out. So, like, I'm almost surprised that either they're not doing it or that they haven't announced it yet. Because I feel like remixing the dungeons, like, even in, like, a Master Quest kind of way would go a really long ways. Yeah, definitely. Because, like, you've got to imagine... much work, because... Well, like, you've got to imagine, like, are the dungeons literally one for one in creation as well as vengeance? Like, that's going to be so weird. I imagine Vengeance might mix them up a bit. I would hope um, so. Like, because uh, the way that they're kind of built a lot of the time, uh, like the ones that like exist in the world map, especially in that last area, it feels like they made the area and they're like, "Oh wait, hold on, this is meant to be a final area. Let's put some like platforming puzzles in it." And like, like that's why you have got like all the cubes floating in the sky. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, like it's it feels like it was added in retroactively, so they could always just put in a different thing. Um, but yeah, I imagine like base game is probably going to be the same still for the most part. Uh, let's see here. So they expanded the level that you can obtain items. That's another one of those. I had no problem with collecting the vending machine garbage, but maybe someone out there had weird things with it. Um, th- this one, I cannot believe I didn't think of as annoying until they showed it off. And I was like, you know what? That was annoying. Fewer flying demons in the dot overworld map. Because when I think about it, like, think of how many times you're, like, running around or trying to, like, dodge just the giant fucking flying enemies that were everywhere. Because they could get you anywhere, no matter where you were. Yeah, and I think they... I can't remember where I saw it. Uh, They mentioned that, like, they won't fly at you from off-screen anymore. Which is nice. I mean, like, for the, like, the giant one you have to, like, not have to, but, like, there's that one that you can, like, run up to its nest to, like, steal an egg, and, like, that one in that first area, like, that makes sense. It's flying on a pattern, it's this giant boss demon, blah, 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 but, like, yeah, there were so many of just, like, yeah, it would just be like, hey, here's this big vulture, he's just gonna grab you from the bottom of this bridge for no reason. Yeah, it's a... 
Um, let's see here. We talked about the difference in the height, uh, like map design and stuff like that. Uh, additional quest, quest, additional quest navigator. So there will be new like quest navigators as you're running around. But the what's what's interesting is like this is another one of like I don't know who needed this, but again, it's uh, no complaint. Quest navigators now are more obvious as to where they're moving. I'm sorry, were we not sure of where your quest navigator was? How they literally just go up to a place, have a giant exclamation point, and go, "Hey, hey, look here, look at this thing!" Right, like uh-huh. I don't know who was missing these before. <laughs> I think, God, it's been a while. I think I remember, like, sometimes you'll be running at, like, full sprint, and you're, you'll just clip, like, a point of interest. So your navigator isn't on screen because you're already, like, sprinting somewhere, and then they'll fly somewhere behind you. So then you turn around, and you're like, oh, God, where are they gone? Um, but, like... I, yeah, the explanation point, I remember... I don't know. Maybe the explanation point doesn't show up through walls, and that's what... Oh, up or I don't know. yeah, that's another one as well. I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit there, but that's a great one. Uh, they've added that when you're, like, in front of 3D objects, they will now actually, like, mask and show your character through the objects. So, like, brick walls, pillars, cars. If you're behind them and the camera can't see your character, it'll pop that up. Like, that's a really, really good one. Uh, Their reasoning behind it was saying to help people with 3D motion sickness. I don't know how that's affected to not being able to see your character, but I know that that is a thing that does get to people. Uh, Another really great change... Oh yeah. Is it one of the things where like it zooms the camera in when you like get close to a wall? So oh, when it gets you're car, right it because yeah, then it's forth. then it's like trying to snap back so that it can show the character. That that would make. More... I, I imagine that's what that is. That makes sense actually. Um, so a really really good change is they fixed. Oh, I guess fix isn't the right word, but they've made it now so the first strikes are a lot easier to to get because originally in SMT five the only way to count as first strike is that you have to hit the enemy from behind and they can't see you. So like now you can be seen as long as you strike the enemy from behind and you're not hit first, you'll get first advantage, which I think is completely fair because I I feel like especially when you were learning the kind of movement and the feel of five, it felt very hard to properly sneak up, not get detected and get that first hit advantage. Mm. You're very slippery and whatnot. So uh, if you want to go at full spell pellet, you've got a lot of momentum behind you. Yes. Uh, now you can actually hard turn on and off miracles, which will be good for like people who kind of want to do challenge runs. Tutorial recaps, I mean, cool. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, they added new subquests, which we've seen a couple of, and again, a lot of them seem really, really cool. Uh, let's see, auto skill, so now instead of just having auto attack, mashing attack, it'll actually just straight up play the game and do, like, recommended skill attacks, uh, button mapping. Before journalist mode. Yes. (laughs) Uh, we've got journalist mode added, button mapping added, graphical options added, double speed for skill cutscenes, which... So, sorry, 30 is, uh, uh, like, number 30 on the list. Mm Mm-hmm. That one, I think, is really important for me because that was the 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 changing how level scaling works. Because I don't know if you felt it. Oh, but, like, that's true. Of... See, sorry, I was thinking mitigation was for the item one with it, but no, you're right. Yeah, mitigate the the balance changing of level scaling is definitely definitely needed because like it's in every SMT and Persona game, and it's usually a little bit stronger in Persona. Uh, I remember going back in. P5 with like uh, and like having a demon with 99 strength but because I was like level 8 I was still only doing like double damage and I was like oh I should be doing like 999 Um, but like in SMT5 it's so strong that like level scaling and it was like oh so grinding is always the answer it's not even like smart like (sighs) what I love about yeah. What, what I loved about, like, uh, SMT3 is, like, oh, Matador's a really hard fight, but you bring um, a Nekomata in with you, you have the, uh, what are the worms called again? The things that you eat, and it changes. Oh, the, 
not the Magatsui, the, um, God, the worm, yeah, the worm thing is, damn it, I'm forgetting. Yeah, uh, either way, you can buy one in a shop just before Matador that makes you resist wind, not null it, but you can get a Nakamata that nulls it, and you can get a Ume, whatever, uh, that absorbs it. And it's like, oh, so gr- like you grind to get a level, but it's not that you're stronger. It's that oh, no, you can wait, sorry. now use demons. It's yeah, it's Magatama. Magatama is the ones that you Magatama, buy. Magatama, that's it. Yeah, yeah. But you get you get one of those, and it can help you. And it's like, oh, grinding does help you, but it's not because you're stronger. Well, that much stronger than you were before. It allows you to have more options and to play in more interesting ways. And that's what I really like about Nocturne. With five. It, it really felt like it was like, oh, I, I just need to come back uh, with like two more levels, and I'll go from like kind of struggling with this fight but doable to oh, it's just I, I can steamroll it. And and I definitely felt that with five, there were two moments for me while playing that feel like straight up skill checks. Number one is the Nua fight. The Nua fight, I straight up was just like, I thought you were supposed to die when I first plot, played that fight. I was like, <laughs> holy shit, she is destroying me. And they literally show it off in this trailer. And in the trailer, like when they're talking about the um, difference, the text of it is so, the damage adjustment by level difference was changed to be more moderate compared to the previous version of the game. Depending on your tactics, it's now been made easier to defeat stronger enemies. And they're literally showing that first Nua fight. Because, yeah, like, there would just be moments that, like, I'm playing right. I've got the right team. I've got the right setup. I just need to be stronger. Which, like, again, is fine. You can grind. You can do other side quests. But, like, that shouldn't always be... Like, that's not a good feeling, especially when you're starting out. And, like, another big moment that get, that original playthrough has, like that first moment when you get to the final level in Dot, like, not the final, final level, but, like, when you get to, like, pick which one of the four council members to fight, when you get there, it's like, oh, holy shit, I've got to just grind, because I'm going to get my ass kicked at any of these fights. Yeah. And, like, I feel like, like, that's that's the other thing. Like, uh, people like to do, like, challenge runs, and, like, oh, I'm going to do it with barely any... Like, barely any leveling or whatever. Or, like, I'm going to, like, speed run this game, so I'm going to avoid random battles as much as I can other than, like, what's mandatory. And, like, SMT5 is like, oh, no. <laughs> if, you, if you're not level 20, like, come back. No, that... I, I'm, I'm really excited about that one just to kind of hope that it feels a lot more kind of balanced. Because, again, there were also moments in the other way around where, like... I felt like I was steamrolling through some sections in five. So, like, if they can just overall make that balancing act a lot more kind of even, I'm all here for it. Because the the other thing with all of that is, um, like, as you said, I was steamrolling the game a lot of the time. And I'm hoping this is more than just turning up, like, uh, toning down the level scaling. And that it's um, also, like, tweaking the game a bit to accommodate for that mm-hmm. because I remember, so you got all of these different Magatsuhi moves, right? 99% of the time, I used the one that would give me all crits. Oh, oh, like literally that was that was the Magatsuhi skill to use. It'd be like, why are you not using that skill? Like, unless you knew you were going to one-shot, it'd be like, no, literally, you save this for every hard fight and you do all crits, because of course you want to do all crits. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, then why have all of these moves? And I feel like um, having group attacks is kind of the answer to that. Of It's like, oh, if you get the group attacks, you'll now have really good Magatsuhi moves that you can use. I assume that they're Magatsuhi moves. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's like, oh, Okay, now you've got something that's actually better than the base thing that you always have with you all the time and is the right answer every time. Because I, I, I can think of what, like, it was during that newer fight where it was the only time in all, the entire game where I went, oh, wow, I need to actually uh, put some tactics into this fight and not just go, I'm going to crit you. Really good point since, uh, you, since a... you mentioned uh, the Magatsui skill. 
a really like minor addition, but I think is super super helpful. The change in effect and the requirement for the Estoma skill. I think like Estoma only needing now Magatsui will help people from spamming it because there were definitely times there'd be like, oh yeah, like you've MP for days because you could just go to the to the like uh, what was it the the Lilad stations or the I forget what it is. But like you could the, just the little. Oh my god, I'm forgetting. But like the the little like stone temple things that would transfer you because they would just give you all your MP and HP back. Spirit, like spirit fonts, I want to say, or something like that. I f- I don't know why. Or like little fountain. It's a fountain something, but yeah, like so like your little thing that would always bump it up. So like now they're not as easy to spam, but also the nice thing with it is if you would use it and you would be in a full moon, it would pretty much negate it and then fuck you over because it would then just immediately end it because it would only last, I think, like for what, like one full cycle of the moon? Mm. So the changes for that one is definitely really, really nice because there would definitely be moments where you would want to use it so you wouldn't get attacked by mobs, but... You'd also have to worry, okay, am I just spamming this thing and wasting a bunch of MP because MP doesn't matter because I'm near a bunch of fast travel points? Or should I just, like, like decide which one matters more in terms of using its skill and usability and also not have to worry as much about, like, the phases of the moon and things like that? Yeah. Um, what's another one? Oh, so here was another weird one. We'd seen this in a preview before, but we didn't really know, like, what this had meant. I thought this was going to be, like, for going to fast travel points. No. This, uh, straight up, at any point in the game, apparently, you can just straight up do sky view. So, not the map, sky view, and then just look at what's directly in front of your surroundings to, like, see what demons are there, what what is ability for... Oh, okay. Sorry, I had to look this up because I was going to fucking drive me crazy. It is. It's the Mita Leyline Founts. So it's the Leyline Fountains was the name of the other one. That was going to drive me fucking insane. So... (laughs) So it's okay. So the game's only like three years old. Um, the sky view thing, I'm curious how much we'll actually use it. it. Like, I could see it helping for like two things. If you're lost or you're trying to like be like, okay, how do I get to the top of this like dilapidated like skyscraper or like parking garage? And if you're looking for new Mitamas, like if you're looking for, no, not the Mitamas. Uh, well, Mitamas, yes, but for the, the Mimen. Like, I think if, like, you're trying yeah, to, like, find, are. like, more of those, that might be able to kind of help you with it. Um, I feel like, though, especially with the new changes to the minimap, I feel like people are just going to use the minimap. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good to have it as, like, an option. Oh, um, for sure. I, I mean... I, th- I think I'd prefer this over the... Like, with how a lot of the, um, like, elevation stuff is going. Like, I mean, I, and they've marked it off better now in the new one. But I think I'd still prefer like an actual like bird's eye view kind of look for it, uh, at least for the outside areas, just because it, it you don't need to be like oh what does this part of the map represent? I can just be like oh like that's that okay, if you know what I mean. No, for sure. And uh, we we talked about it a little bit with the new difficulty level, but uh, forgot to give it by the actual name. So the new game plus hard mode is called Godborn. And this, uh, and again, along with like how hard it is with it, uh, just for everyone to kind of be aware, when you start this new mode, every enemy demon is instantly level one hundred and fifty. <laughs> so, what an amazing system! <laughs> yes, uh, I'll be curious, like if they kind of do anything in terms of like messing around with that, of like, I, I I always like when they add in little extra modes like that, but then it always kind of makes me then ask after the fact, like, okay cool that you're adding this, what's the challenge outside of just the thrill of beating it? Like, see if they want to add anything extra kind of with it, but uh, I mean, all, all, of, all of that still said, an absolutely insane amount of things to kind of cram into a less than 15 minute long trailer. Yeah, yeah. Also, Jesus uh, H. Christcraft, how did you let me talk for two hours tonight? I was supposed to let you go uh, to bed. I was going to say, tonight, uh, uh, I see daylight, my dude. (laughs) 
my uh, my it is it is midnight for me right now while we're recording this, and I guarantee my wife is just in bed being like, "He said he was going to be done by eleven o'clock. Now look at him; he's he not even going to be done." Is he? So, oh no, I'm sorry, Spencer. Put that's okay. I can I can edit I can edit in the uh, I can edit on the couch while I get kicked out of bed for the night with it. But we should pro we should probably start wrapping up. But I wanted to at least ask any. Any final vengeance thoughts? Any 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 last words or anything you want to say before we get our goodbyes ready? Um, yeah, I hope there is more Yakimo and Nua than what the trailers are showing off because they are there, but we're not seeing much of them. And I love those two character designs so much. I want like a proper one v one Yakimo fight. Yeah, because like, like we get a we get a couple of good moments, but like. That ending fight with him and Nua, it's not the same as just... I, wa- I want to see like him go full strength, no holds bar against us. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you, you do fight them... You, you only fight them in now Halbino mode, don't you? You don't fight them in... Like, you, you could... You, there's never a fight where it's like, oh, you've got to fight both of them at the same time, is there? Technically, the last fight is that. Cause yeah, because like... like the first phase is both of them. Um, but I feel like, I feel like for the most part, though, their fights are very separate and very, very different with it. So, like, I, I, I would like to see. Ironically, now that we know with our uh, not bloody palace Timu mode. I almost kind of feel like that might be a fun mode of them, like kind of like how Kingdom Hearts does it, where it's like, hey, here's a fight we couldn't really throw in lore-wise, but like now we have a reason for you to fight Yuffie or something like that. So like that might be kind of fun to be like, hey, what would a level 99 Yakimo fight be? And then show what that would yeah. actually be in that mode. So that's got me optimistic. Yeah, that'd be really cool. And uh, you'd also be able to get the, like, oh, here's just two normal boss fights, uh, but now you got to fight both at the same time. Oh, damn, like, that's uh, a really good idea. Like, imagine, like, the first snakehead fight with her and, like, the bridge Yakimo fight. Just stick both of them in one fight together with you. Like, that would be wild. Yeah, or, like, it'd be like, oh, oh fight the entire council. <laughs> Oh, dude, that's got that's got to be one, right? Like, I was shocked that that never happened. Yeah, yeah, but like, it'd be like, uh, you did, you just got all like five of them all being like, I've got, I've got to imagine. Hey, by the way, hey, kid, we're gonna beat your ass. There's got to be a new super boss in this. Like, it can't just be the same one from Vanilla. There's got to oh, be a yeah. new super boss. It's, uh, I'm trying to think of what it could be, but. No, they'll definitely beat it. They're not... Well, I mean, they could just do Shiva again, I guess. But I don't know, man. There's a there's a, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of fun potential with this game. Uh, fucking insane to say this by the from us recording this now. We are 34 days away from launch. Yeah, I so for whatever reason, I thought it was July. And I was just my like, wallet oh, wishes wait, wait, it was. You me. I was like, yeah, well, for like for me, uh, once July hits, um, that that was one of the other reasons why I wasn't paying too much attention to it. Um, like, like trails through daybreak is early July, and I'm like, that that's where all of my attention is going when that drops. Like, so knowing that I can probably play a bit of this before it comes out, if you know. Who knows, but it's good to know, but it's also like, oh shit, that snuck up on me. Speaking of things that snuck up on me, I was not ready for this, but literally during the podcast, I pre-ordered something I didn't think I'd be A, buying, or B, picking up anytime soon. Uh, During the show, they finally put up the pre-orders for Operation Rain Code, the PS5 version. A, A, I completely fucking forgot that game came out when it came out on Switch. And B, I really wanted that game when it came out originally, because A, I love uh, 
what what is their new studio name? Tokyo Games, I think. Um, yeah, I love I love the minds behind that team. I really really uh, think it's an interesting idea for a game. I saw no reviews for the Switch one. I heard nothing bad about the game, but I just like I feel like that game came and went instantly, and I went. I would want to play this. I just don't want to play it on Switch, and then I remember I almost picked it up, because there's this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous steelbook that was in the collector's edition. I was like, damn, this is this is tempting me. And uh, literally, they announced it's coming to Xbox, PS5, and PC this October, and there is not only a giant-ass steelbook uh, with the collector's edition, did, did you see what, what else they announced as like, the pre-order bonus? Uh, I did see it. I, it's gone out of my mind. It but, is uh... a completely brand new and fully translated in English uh, novel. Yes, no, yeah, yeah, I did see that. And I was like, as someone who is a fan um, of light novels and also is very aware that we so rarely ever get them, I was like, that's a pretty fucking cool, like, addition. Yeah, I, th- that is, like, good, because, um... I believe we got, like, a couple of them for, like, Danganronpa, uh, eventually. I don't know if like, we, we ever got get... them translated, though. No, no, I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, we got, I believe we got If, which was the, like, good ending, uh, like, where it's like, oh, we stopped Junko before it even happened. Um, like, was it a digital-only the... release? I don't think it got a physical release. I think, I think so. Um... Oh, wait, no. I think we didn't get If. We got the prequel one where it was about, like, a different girl and, like, the end of the thing is, like, oh, it was Junko pulling out the strings behind everything. Um, but, like, and that, that that was, like, a novella. Like, it wasn't even a... I think it was only, like, 90 pages or something. But, um... God. And, uh... The only other example I can think of is that there's a novel that comes with Mary Skelter that we got. Uh, but that's like a deep cut. Okay, I see um, them, and I see that they've been released. I don't think any of them have been actually... I'm trying to, like... I see that they've been released, but I'm like, I don't know who I don't translated think, I don't these. Think they've been physical. Oh, no, I mean, I'm like wondering, like, who like, like who, like, who translated these? I, I don't know. I, I think um, one or two of them are just, like, in the game. Like you go into your extras option, like like extra section and the options, and it's like, oh, just read the book. That is so um, weird. By the way, shout out to a uh, very little known fact, uh, but Lost Media for sure. I, although I'm sure there's video of them out there, but like playable, the Danganronpa trilogy all having demos that are can not canon. But like weird one-offs that aren't in the game, but they're like aware that they're demos. Uh, they are all super fucking oh. cool, and I always wish there was a way that like you could have played them in the final release, but they never, never did that. Oh, that's a shame. Well, expect- I'm sure well, they exist on YouTube. I, I I know for sure one does. I'm not sure about two, and three was made available as like a download. So three is the easiest one to like be able to see. The tricky part. Oh, the tricky part with three, three. The tricky part with three, though. Remember, because it was published originally by Enisa, when they got oh, delisted, yeah, yeah. the demos got removed as well. Oh, for God's sake. <sighs> That sucks. Um, though I was just thinking, um, like talking of Raincode, I, I saw some of those screenshots, and it's like, man, this looks like a game that they got told it was Switch exclusive like six months before it, fin- <laughs> like, it was finished development. <laughs> because you look at those PS5, like there are visual effects that just aren't on the Switch version. Like I've um... I've heard the Switch version runs better than you think it would. Uh, as somebody, my friend streamed it. And I like tuned in and watched a few of them. It doesn't. It, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't. It, the ju- are, the justice, some... uh, the justice of running a stream. To be fair, it's um, no, no. Like um, just I, I remember like there's se- sequences that it's like th- this is 20 frames. Like it, it, it's not that it's 
frame dropping. It's that they've locked it to 20 because it can't run a vault heist. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, oh, God. Um, and the, the other thing, uh, oh, God, it was something else I was about to say. Oh, uh, yeah, you've, like, the game didn't get any reviews or you didn't see any of them, Spencer. Uh, guess what? It's going to not get any some more because, um, they're doing the very weird thing Nisa did with a couple of the uh, Falcom games because they thought it was a good idea and they didn't realize until it was too late. Of um, So it's coming out, what, October? So I- I'm not sure if this is the thing you were going to say, but yeah, the release of it is weird. It's coming to Steam in June, but will not be in English yeah. until October. So it'll be on Steam, but you have to be aware that they won't patch in the English till October. Yeah. So why that's a problem is when you do that, when you put uh, put the English patch out and it becomes available in the West, um, it's already been out for several months. So it doesn't make its way to Steam's new and trending page on the front page. And like, and it, 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 like, Steam does not advertise it. Oh God, I didn't even, ever. I didn't even think about that. Wow, because it's just a patch. Maybe if it's if it's already in your wish list, it will pop up with a recently patched. But other than that, it, like, it, it, you get buried because they did that with, with Nyuta, and Nyuta, I don't think even broke like fifty thousand, like on Steam, because it was. Just, and they've done it with Daybreak as well with Nisa, uh, and like it's 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 not going to be great. I haven't felt unsurprised disappointment like this since Uppers <laughs> apparently did the Uppers. No. Nah. <sighs> oh, Uppers! Never forget. Uh, just never forget Uppers. Never, n- never forget having to see the phrase we're delaying the game because not enough people have pre-ordered it and we're going to go bankrupt to the moment it comes out I I wonder if someone's done like a YouTube video talking about the history of uppers because it's like it is such a fascinating game that like and the worst part about uppers it's a good game it's like if it was a bad game that would be one thing but uppers legitimately is such a fun beat 'em up that has no right to go as hard as it does. But like I remember following that game in Japan and it was like, man, this game's release is like a fucking miracle. Can't wait for it to come out in English. Sucks to be you, Spencer. Sucks to be you. And then like it comes out like they announce it for Steam and they go dark for four years. Well, remember, remember, like, we didn't even, I don't even know if they ever officially said this, but everyone knows the reason. The game is done on PS4. There's an English version of it on PS4. Sony, Sony just straight up would not let them release it. Yeah, because, you know, Sony's, and it's the the Senran Kagura team, and they got screwed over by Sony as well with, um, I think it's Senran Kagura Project 7. Yeah, like the seventh mainline one. Yep, yep, yep. And they just had to cancel it because Sony refused to let them publish it. And they were like, "Well, <laughs> I just typed it in. There is no, there is no history of Uppers, the video game on YouTube. I'm, I mean, I'm, I think I'm, like- I'm feeling oddly motivated to make an hour long essay about the history of Uppers as someone." <laughs> Speaking of demos that shouldn't exist that you, I still have, my Japanese Vita has a bunch of demos. I have not the not one, but both demos they made because they did two different demo campaigns for Uppers. One was the game when the game got announced, and the second one was after the delay because not enough people pre-ordered it, so they released another demo trying to get more people to play it. Oh no! Oh. The sad, the sad tragedy of uppers. My, my, uh, I, I, my love. <laughs> I just love, like, I can't remember where I heard it, but somebody was like, the tagline should have just been, "It's Sanran Kagura for women and also <laughs> men." Because <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you got all these hunky dudes instead of all like these giant like chest beef or girls kicking around, but also it's about bromance and bros before the hose. Uppers, I feel like, would have had a 10 out of 10 English dub. 
Oh god. Oh, imagine if like they fucking like ghost storied it or something, and, and like we're just like, you know what? We're going to go off the rails with this shit. Oh my god. We don't. We uh, we, oh. we 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 didn't we didn't deserve it. Everybody out there, because I know no one here will buy uppers. Uh, even though you definitely can just buy it on Steam, uh, all seven of you. Uh, check it out. It's got a really cool opening animation. Uh, it's a fun-as-fuck beat-em-up from the Senra and Kagura devs, and uh, about seven um, people seven people played it. And uh, check out the official sponsored song that the band Knockout Monkey did as well. Oh my was- god, I forgot about that! <laughs> Because like that that was that was in my like music rotation for a good year. Um, like I I'd put it on in the background while I was like doing college work and stuff. Oh my god! Um, god, uh, and uh, little do you know, Spencer, Uppers was the te- well technically was the topic of my third YouTube video that I ever did. And um, so while I like Uppers, and I will say Uppers is a good game, uh, two things that should be noted. Uh, you shouldn't play it on hard mode. No, God mode no. <laughs> is, it, hard mode is meant to be a new game plus mode, and it's fine for the first half of the game. But you get into the second half of the game, and you you start getting hit by attacks that do like ninety percent of your health, and it's not fun. Um, secondly, uh, it was designed for the Vita. It it is not a game that you should be playing in a like trying to beat in a twenty four hour period because you want to be the first person to put a review out for it. Uh, because the, so I, like when I was doing my video, I was like playing it and just got absolutely miserable by like the last ten percent, uh, and was like I kind of want to do something else. So uh, I believe the video is something called like uh, diversi- diversifying your backlog or something. Uh, uh, because like after that, I ended up going and was like, you know what? I played a lot of RPGs. I played a lot of anime games. I'm gonna go play Mafia Definitive Edition. <laughs> the, the the only natural follow up to that. <laughs> well, I, I think it had come out at the, roughly the same time, and I was like, you know what? I've heard some good things from uh, Easy Allies about the original, so I'm gonna give it a go. Oh my uh, god! Because of that, I was like. I've not done a video for a month. I need to do something. I like, love. I love. We start the show by jerking off Tokyo Xanadu, and now we end the show by polishing off uppers. It's it's like uh, it's like the the niche upon it. niche uh, inception. We are the hipsters. We are here, single handedly, being the only people who pay for like double A games. Oh man, I, I, I think, think I'm gonna have to say single A. I don't even know if I could give it the okay. double A. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if it deserves the double A treatment. Like nobody else out here is buying Dio Field Chronicles, Valkyrie Elysium. Oh, fuck man, Sakura I love Dio Field Chronicles. <laughs> like, forget the haters. That's a monarch ass game, and coming from me, that's a compliment. <laughs> Oh god, I I never went back to Monarch. I, I did my first impressions and was like, now when Monarch, cool, now when Monarch back. Two comes out, then you'll go back. <laughs> the uh, seventeen years later, the Monarch retrospective. Oh my god! All right, we have got to get the hell out of here, and I think you got to make breakfast <laughs> yeah. at this point. Craft, where can people find you, and where do you want to be found? Uh, you can find me on YouTube under Craftium, spelled like, I don't know, like a element, like K-R-A-F-T-I-U-M. For some reason, people have trouble spelling it. Uh, uh, and then you can find me on Twitter at WiseWolfCraft, because if anybody remembers the last time I was on here, uh, I got banned off Twitter for using some slightly colorful language. Um, it was I was quoting uh, Sly Cooper Free. Um, and the Twitter auto mod determined that the phrase "I'm going to floss my teeth with your spine" was a ins- like a threatening term and banned me for, for like harmful violence threats. So, yeah, you, you can find me at Wise Wolf Craft instead of Craftium. God bless. Oh my god. <laughs> um, everybody. As always, uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, Crafty, and thanks so much for coming on. Uh, remember, check out the show notes below. There's the Facebook 
group. There is Twitter, Discord. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Five star reviews on Spotify or iTunes really, really, really help. Uh, also, shout out to everyone who supports the show on Patreon.com. You guys are all getting this show early, uh, so if you want to get the show early, join in for exclusive giveaways. I think because of how much manga we talked about, I think I, I think I have to do this now. So I'm gonna lock myself in. Uh, the May giveaway will be not one but two volumes of Persona Four arena that you will get for free. Uh, one of them is the Barnes & Noble exclusive cover, which is brand new, shrink craft, looks beautiful. Uh, it's my last volume of that. And then you will get uh, Hold Your Breath for Excitement Craft. You'll get volume two. It's the standard cover. And the front cover is bent. Uh, why would you want Ooh. this bent cover? Uh, this was the copy I bought at Anime Expo. I bought it from the Udon booth directly. Uh, I was extremely excited. I read the whole thing while waiting because on my last day at LA, I was at the airport for, I think, fucking nine hours straight because I couldn't even afford to go back to AX on the last day. Like, when you're so poor, your only option is just be at the airport for nine hours and wait for your flight. Uh, that's where we were at. Uh, I put my copy of Volume 2 in my book bag, and somehow, when it was sliding into my luggage, it perfectly folded, and my whole flight back just creased the fuck out of that book. So you'll get one immaculate Volume 1, and you'll get a piece of history for Volume 2. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I mean, what more can you ask for? Uh, my only my only guess at this point would then be I'm gonna ask whoever wins it be like, well, I'm clearly gonna give you Volume One, but do you actually want like a nice copy of Volume Two? And then I could probably just actually just give them a nice version of Volume Two. But there's the history; it's the just rare like... SMT bent cover history. <laughs> just give them like Volume Three, and it's like all charred up and barely <laughs> holding together. This one just actually was signed <laughs> by Koromaru. <laughs> So yes, uh, if you would like to enter that giveaway, uh, you've got the rest of May to enter. You just need to be a patron at any level, dollar or up. But also, if you'd like to get a shout-out at the end of each episode and be an executive producer, $5 and up will get you that executive producer credit, such as Michael Wilson, Bell Chill, Cosmic Lumi, Budweiser Talkin, Carlos Hernandez, Cross Ren Ren, Winnie, Jagengis, Gorosero, Solaire, Mirth Mouser, Steven Yip, and Patrick Desart. Jagingus as well. I think I said Jagingus. Oh, there it is. All right, perfect. I got everybody. No one was forgotten. Thank God. Uh, that's the show. I'm going to edit this two and a half hour uh, masterpiece while also listening to the upper soundtrack. And uh, Kraft, I, I'm just going to assume at this point you're just going to go eat breakfast and go into a diabetic coma? Uh, I, um, I might try uh but i feel like i'll hit some point in the day and i'll just pass out so okay who knows if it makes you feel any better if it makes you feel any better i want you to know because i'm a fucking broken man and i got paid during this episode um you mentioned deal field chronicles which is a game i love and i was thinking to myself fuck i never got that deal field chronicles steelbook so it was only in europe and I looked oh, at no. and I and I looked at and I looked in eBay and I said, God, it was really expensive last time I looked. I should see how much. I bet I bet my favorite Square Enix game of 2022. I bet it's a really expensive and rare steel book. Uh, some dude in Poland has like a hundred. He's selling them for like ten bucks. I might have to buy a ten dollar Deal Field Chronicles steel book. <laughs> uh, also, he's got a problem sensor, but I love no, 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 no. Here's the problem. Same seller. I was looking at the page. He, you know what else he has that I don't have? He also has the Babylon's Fall steel book in stock. Spencer, don't. You know, like, I already have a sealed and an opened copy of Babylon's Fall on both PS5 and PS4, and I'm like, the ult- oh. the ultimate insult to injury to Babylon's Fall Ooh. would be owning the Steelbook as well. Would it be an insult, or would it just... <laughs> Spencer, don't do it. Sorry, what I mean is it would be an insult to me not funding the Polish economy by giving this man $10. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, I guess you've got no other choice. <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, wish me luck. I'll be uh, entering my new stage of bankruptcy for episode 334. But, uh, Craftium, thank you again 
for watching me spiral into madness and uh, joining me for this horrendously late podcast. No problem. Thank you for letting me yap for two and a half hours. I'm very fond of it, and I also apologize. All right. Normally I would say goodbye, but I'm a glutton for punishment, and I just realized we talked about Star Wars, so I'm going to do a very unpopular goodbye question. Craftium, your goodbye will be in the form of a run-on sentence. What is the Craftium hype check for Star Wars Outlaws? Um, cautiously, but very optimistic. I agree. I like the de- I like the developer. I think Massive could make a really cool game, but I'm not sold yet. But I think if I see more of it as a game game, not just cutscenes, I will be more excited. I think if I'd played a Ubisoft game in the last four years, I'd still be burnt out on the formula because like, I play one and I'm like, I'm done, I'm done. But I haven't touched one in a long time. Yeah, Sands of Time <laughs> thankfully does not count. <laughs> Yeah, I mean pre-Assassin's Creed formula. I haven't climbed a tower in a video game in a long time. We're not we're not counting that Assassin's Creed 2 Platinum. Yeah, I mean, that was back when I was in, like, high school. Like, okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Goodbye. Don't Platinum Assassin's Creed 2, and have a good rest of your week. Toodles.